We all need medical care, expert medical care. That's why you need Convenient MD. Our state-of-the-art facilities give you access to leading local physicians and medical teams seven days a week. When you need medical care, it's not just about being there. It's about raising the bar. It's about peace of mind. Our focus is you. Because that's the way it should be. Convenient MD, putting quality back into healthcare. My name is Crystal Oliveris. I attended Newport High School. I played soccer uh, since I was about five and track and field middle school through high school. This is my varsity letter for soccer uh, with my pin. Sports was everything. I was very shy and timid. I don't think without sports I would have gained the confidence that I do now. But it taught me uh, patience. You had to be patient. You had to practice and practice. You wanted to get that goal or wanted to get to the finish line before everyone else. We've got our, my middle school and high school broken records. The first one here is the 200 meter. I broke this in 2009, so my freshman year, and it has my time. And then the next one that we have is the mile. This was also a freshman year, and the 10 to go along with it. Huge impact in my life, learning that you're gonna fail before you succeed. It seems like leaders were destined to be so, born with confidence blessed with talent, graced with wisdom. That's how they might seem, but it's not how they're made. Leadership takes practice and discipline and critical thinking. It's not a gift, it's a choice, and it starts here. Decide to lead as an Army officer. Every athlete at every level has goals. Whether it's running marathons or owning every obstacle on the course, no matter your goal, chocolate milk helps you recover, refuel, and rehydrate. Chocolate milk, official sports drink of Prospect Acres Obstacle Course. Special Olympics New Hampshire is back. In 2023, Special Olympics will be offering a full schedule of sports training and competition events serving more than 3,000 athletes in the Granite State. We need volunteers statewide to make our more than 65 local programs work. Are you interested in enriching the life of an athlete? Let's get you hooked up with a one-day event or local program that's near you. We're everywhere in New Hampshire with lots of volunteer opportunities. Go to SONH.org for more information. Good afternoon. This is New Hampshire Track and Field .com, powered by Runners Alley. Our meet hub today brought to you by Tim's Truck Capital. We find ourselves at Oyster River High School in Durham, New Hampshire, host for Division II state championships. Right now we can take a look at pole vault. Looks like we're still getting some warm ups in on the boys side of things. We'll bring you this action. We still have another hour to go before the track events start. We will start those with the four by eights, just as we have all week long. And while we do have a little bit of time here as these guys are still warming up, bring you a few messages courtesy of the NHIAA. Service Credit Union is the official credit union of the NHIAA and NH High School Sports. Learn more about how they can help support your financial goals, too, at servicecu.org forward slash NHIAA. Members of the Army National Guard don't give up, and they do whatever it takes to, succeed, to achieve success. Find your success in the Army National Guard. Visit nationalguard.com forward slash NH and be on the lookout for the upcoming Guardians of the Granite State event where your student athletes could win scholarships and more. Championship apparel is available online now from our partners at Northwest Designs, Inc. Commemorate your championship experience with an event tee or sweatshirt today. Store link is at nhiaa.org. 
So we can take a look at our pole vault. Again, they are warming up, but if we take a look at entries for it, as we find it. We can see we have 16 competitors in the field today. Starting height will be nine feet. Looks like we're still uh, a few minutes away from that going. In our field today, we've got jumpers with seed marks ranging from eight feet, 11 and three quarters. So today might be a challenge at opening height as it typically is, all the way up to 13 feet. 13 foot seed mark belongs to Ben McDowell of Bo, the junior. Looking at the full list of guys, we have Hunter from Milford, Andrew from St. Thomas, Jeff from Hanover, Liam from Bow, Micah from Oyster River, Owen from Sauhegan, Nicholas from Lebanon, Alex from Co Brown, Wyatt from Co Brown, Joseph from Bow, Jack from Conval, Noah from Lebanon. Cole from Plymouth Regional, Zach from Co Brown, and Finn from Co Brown. And then, as mentioned previously, our, our top seed, Ben from Bo. Uh, so the next best jump to Ben's 13 foot would belong to Finn Hill of Co Brown. He uh, has jumped 12 1 this season. Third would be Zach Blades from Co Brown. He's jumped 11 6. Same mark belongs to Cole Ahern from Plymouth Regional at 11 6. Noah Lamontane from Lebanon is 11 feet. So that kind of makes up our 11 plus club. We'll see just how high we can get. We'll uh, bring you as much pole vault action as we can. And then once track events start, we will uh, shift our attention onto the track. We will see if we can't uh, keep an eye out on pole vault as well though. Try and bring you those updates as we go. But we are about 55 minutes away from the track events starting. Taking a look at the weather today. Uh, it's nice and sunny currently, a bit of wind kind of kicking up here and there. Definitely a lot better than what we saw on Wednesday. Um, I did hear a rumor that Oyster River actually had their prom last night. I'll have to find out if that's true. Uh, on a similar note, Co Brown had graduation last night. And I know that one for a fact. So we do have some graduates among us who have uh, kind of elevated on to the next part of their their lives so we might uh, call Aiden Cox a freshman again you never know Let's see what happens as we go Gonna step away from the mic for just a moment while these guys continue their warm up. Once they start their competition, we'll jump back on and give you what you give you what we can on it.
you see the request to show the triple jump. We'll uh, see if we can't get a camera angle for one of the pits. We do have a camera over there, currently not pointed at it, but we'll see what we can do just while we wait for this pole vault to get going. See if we can't uh, double dip a little bit, so stay tuned for that. Looks like we do have a little bit of uh, long jump action. Triple jumps just going the opposite way. Apologies on that, but we'll see what uh, can't bring you over here. So I believe triple jump doesn't start till after long jump anyway. So we still got a little bit of time before triple jump goes off. So way long jump is structured. is into two flights. Now there's 16 total qualifiers, which means we have two flights of eight. We can go a little bit quicker that way instead of having to do five live with a long flight. Um, they can run through all eight at a time. Usually allows for athletes to kind of maintain their level of warmth with it, making sure they're Nice and ready for it, as we see an attempt here. So taking a look at flight number one, we have Delaney of Co Brown, Cara of Goffstown, Madison of Lebanon, Rowan of Kingswood, Sabrina of Bow, Alexis of Co Brown, Claire of Hollis Brookline, and uh, Berrigan of Hollis Brookline as well. Berrigan is the top seed in this first flight. The second flight will have uh, the longer seed marks in it. I believe we just saw Goffs down within the last moment or two, so that would have been Kara jumping.
bring some of that audio in from over by the pit unmanned cameras. You never know what we're going to pick up, but with any luck, we'll be able to pick up some of the distances that these girls are jumping. I do hear uh, Christy Heiko in the background, though. She is one of the uh, lead officials in the state of New Hampshire. Once again, this is New Hampshire Track and Field .com, powered by Runner's Alley Meet Hub today, brought to you by Tim's Truck Capital. See Hoka all over the screen. Currently, that will go away once the uh, track events start, but Hoka is our season sponsor. believe we just saw that 14 five three quarters jump from Berggren Hollis Brookline senior which means we're gonna go back to the top of the order this will be Delaney Manning of Co Brown sophomore comes in with best 13 11 5 and that's a foul looked like toe just got over the board a little bit and if we see it just a foul from this angle uh, usually a good indicator that there's an inch or two over Next on the runway, we're looking at Kara of Goffstown, also a sophomore. Her best on the season, 14.1.5. She had room on the board there, but gives her a legal jump. Just heard 12 feet, 11 and a half inches. Meanwhile, it looks like we uh, might have some pole vault action starting up as well. See if I can't get another commentator to kind of ad lib with me. They can keep an eye on pole vault while I keep an eye on the long jump. As we see Madison Garrow, the freshman of Lebanon. She comes in with a 14-2. Hey, 
Bryant. Hey, Bryant. Where do I get one of those yellow shirts? There's Rowan at Kingswood. Uh, Plenty of room. You can't afford it. I got a Milford athlete up right now in the pole vault. That looks like Hunter. At nine feet right now. Way back when Oz and I, I tried to work with Exxon. Oz and Hand and we both work. Yeah. 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 So Hunter's PR right now is 8 foot 11 and 3 quarters, so this would be a quarter of an inch PR for him. Yeah, I called that out early. It's definitely a, a tough way to start, and, you know, he's not alone with it being a bit of a challenge. They usually do that uh, intentionally. It's not necessarily maliciously done, but yep. it's just kind of how it works. Well, I think for him, I mean, if you want to be competing at States, you know, good time to PR. <laughs> Long jump looks like we've got Hallsbrook line up again. That might have been a toe over. Yep, it was. So we'll switch our featured uh, camera again. It doesn't look like pole vault's quite ready yet. Tyler Sheedy will let us know once uh, he sees that vaulter taken off. Yes, so we've got Hollis Brookline again. That's a legal mark for Berrigan. Again, top seed in this first flight. I knew I was in good way. 14 feet, four inches for her. At the moment at pole vault, it seems the officials are discussing something. I'm not sure what it is. That was Delaney Manning of Coe Brown. Yeah, pole vault can be one of those events too where, you know, you, you measure twice, three times, four times with it, um, get real. Well, especially with you know it being only a quarter of an inch past what he's done before. Oh yeah. You want to make sure it's exactly. Yeah. No, the the pole vault and the high jump, they they measure pretty thoroughly from the the center there, making sure it is exactly what they say it is. We've got Kara up on the runway again for Goffs down. That was a close one. So it kind of looked like from our perspective that it was. Perfect, which usually tells us from this perspective that it's unfortunately not. I'm honestly not even sure how they even do a quarter of an inch in the pole vault difference. Carefully. <laughs> I mean, that's, I, that's probably like a tenth of the size of a bar. Not even more than that, but. Madison with a legal jump. Let's see if we can't get a mark on it. Twelve, eleven, and one quarter. If you couldn't hear that at home, I'll try my best to reproduce what I can hear. Probably not needed, but. There's a few voices talking, so. There's Rowan from Kingswood. I tell you, what about the uh, the nerves of someone who you're already looking at over your, your PR in pole vault, and you just have to stand there waiting? Yeah, exactly. I don't even know what attempt this is for him, but. Well, I, I'm going to go ahead and say this is going to be the first attempt. I okay. Know, he's top of the order. Oh, sure. And I was thinking to maybe have started already, but. Can I get a yeah. Video? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, 
Thank you. Oh, look at that. Someone uh, in the crowd is trying to get a video, and that works for us. I'm going back down there, Phil. Yep. Go for it. Alexis Cowan and Nicole Brown, senior. Although maybe not. Co Brown graduated last night. <laughs> Grad student. Should be illegal at States, right? Right, yeah. It's the same thing every year with Co Brown, though. <laughs> Before States, every year? So oh, it's, yeah, I guess, it's yeah. funny. It is usually Saturday. Pre pandemic, Co Brown had a graduation on Friday night. States was always on Saturday. Mm -hmm. As we see, Hollis Brookline, that's Claire. That looks like one of the better jumps that we've seen. And then um, post-pandemic, what they've done the last couple of years is basically they have it on Wednesday night. Um, this year, however, with the, the rain that we saw at D3's Wednesday night, uh, they opted because they're doing it outside. What rain? They did it uh, last night instead of Thursday night. So they, they shifted, and somehow we're still uh, the, the day after graduation for those athletes. So what do you do if it ends up being the same day as your divisional state championships? That'd be a big deal. So that I mean that's the thing is that's one of the reasons why um, when they used to rotate, there'd be a Friday night and a Saturday, a Saturday. Mm -hmm. They never had D two on that Friday night because there was a D two school that was just because of Co Brown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he also, he's ready to go now in pole vault. All right, we'll shift over, especially because it looks yeah. like uh, we might be in between flights in our long jump, which means flight two will be coming up. But right now, hey, there we go. Wow. Nice. All that waiting around really doesn't, doesn't seem good. So, are you are you telling me that like he just cleared his best? Oh yeah, and he like launched. That was over easy. It. Yeah, he must have been ready for this one today. And that, that was Milford, right? That was Hunter. Yep, that was Hunter. All right. Sophomore. Nice. Shout out to him. Good job, Hunter. Yeah, it says starting height, nine feet. So I have to imagine that's what they're doing. Honestly, I mean, that looks like he was at least 10 feet he got up in oh, the yeah. air. Oh, yeah. He and that, that gets him towards that top six position. That would be an amazing yeah, uh, underdog story. Kind of keep up with that. Sophomore, so definitely plenty of room for growth with it. Not the prettiest form I've ever seen. So, again, <laughs> just indicates room for yeah. growth. And speaking of sophomores, we got Andrew from St. Thomas now ready to go. He comes in at nine feet. There's a cluster of them right at nine, or a yep. couple of them at least. A cluster in the nines, I'll say that. that. That makes me sound smarter, I appreciate that. <laughs> and it looks like he's gonna knock it up on the pole that time. Yeah, it looked like uh, hand placement kind of slipped down on the, the pole, so you could tell pretty early on in that jump it wasn't necessarily gonna be the most successful. It's definitely a lot of things that you can look for with pole vault because it is such a technical event. Mm -hmm. um, usually takes a while to get good at. Not uh, not always the case, you know, especially if you have certain backgrounds, like gymnastics background is usually pretty helpful with pole vault. The thing Having that I kind of like find interesting is that for, you know, heights like this, I mean, when you see the pros, their their poles are not even close to the height of the of the bar, but these guys, their poles are taller than what the bar is. Yeah. So that's a really big thing to focus on. Yeah, and I mean, all of them could um, have different height poles. There are different mm -hmm. options out there. Um, obviously, some of them will have some overlap, but we also saw, and I'll point it out next time, that uh, the person there in the event staff shirt kind of moving those standards around. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And oh, oh, he got nearly over it. Yeah, so that's that's one of the things that we see a lot in pole vault is, you know, plenty of height, form, not exactly uh, there yet. Uh, did you see a jersey on that, him? That, I'm assuming that's Jeff okay. of Hanover. Do we have Bo on the, the runway now? Sometimes pole vault's a little bit more relaxed with uniforms. Yep. And a shot puts definitely, and disc kicks are like that sometimes as well. Yeah. So there's Liam coming up from Bo. So we can see him adjusting that standard right there. Those standards on both sides kind of shift backwards and forwards within a certain amount. You can you can adjust them. Um, so each athlete will kind of have a preference of where that top bar, um, how far away it is from, from where they put the pole in. And they can change that throughout the competition as well. 
So typically you look at kind of the apex or the arch, where that athlete is, um, and if they did form right but didn't line up with the bar, you can kind of shift the bar either forward or backwards. And oh, he got, wow, that was a really exciting jump or vault. I, so think, I think he barely hit the bar, but it stayed up. Yeah, again, that was one of the ones where it's, it's plenty of height, not uh, not exactly the correct pole vault form, not knocking him, just saying the truth of it. Yeah. Uh, typically, you're, you're going to want to kind of turn in the air and land right in the middle on your back. Um, but we'll see what Micah of Oyster River has. So I know Micah's brother, Ethan, was pretty good at pole vault last year. As we get further down the list, um, there will be some guys who are probably not coming in at this height. And I would say with that as well, as uh, the heights go up, we'll, we'll see the, the form kind of get a little bit better. And mm -hmm. that's just how that works. All right, here's Owen of Sauhegan. That's a freshman. Which I, I was saying the other night, it's kind of rare to see in pole vault because this is his first year, I'd assume, of, of doing pole vault. Yep. No, it's always good if you're a freshman who can make states, especially if it's something technical like pole vault. You know, it, it really does require a lot of time. Um, usually pole vault athletes are, are pretty good athletes, but... Uh, Tyler, that's not right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> He's showing something as I, I lose track of what I was saying Sorry. mid, <laughs> mid thop. But here we go. Nice. And we can see a little bit of a rotation in the air. That's that's more how you want to do it. And we can see that's why he was able to clear that so easily. I'd say we've seen higher heights out of people, but by far the best form I think I've, I've seen so far in this competition. Double checking on long jump. Looks like they are still doing some run throughs for flight number two of the girls. Now a half hour away from running events starting. So this is Nicholas. Nice. Yeah, good bend in the pole. Form not bad. I don't want to get too critical. It's It's been a year or two since I've coached pole vault. Hey, you can tell that I am not at all critical because <laughs> I have no idea what to do. I was just thinking, like, I got I to gotta go through all of yep. my, my normal stuff with it and... Uh, Make sure I'm saying the correct things as we see Cole Brown's up now. Yeah, my mindset is to get over the bar. Nice. Don't get over it. Oh, no. That's all I can think of. Davi, is this Alex? So we see kind of a little bit of a stall before getting there. A uh, number of things could be steps are off, speed was off. I uh, kind of gave up on it. Some, something along those lines. Davio is giving me a head nod, so I assume that means that is Alex. Not that I expect him to know every pole vaulter on the Co Brown team. I feel like we should just turn his mic on, force him into talking. Well, we're we're so skipping. Like, uh, yeah, it looks like St. Thomas. No, Pl Plymouth maybe. I'm going with Bo. No. Oh, I think that. Oh no, this might be our first guy up again. Yeah, this is Andrew again, so okay. I think we're back around the, the order. Which means that we're either doing five live or just not a lot of guys coming in at opening height. Unless they kind of went to the left there on that one. I wasn't exactly paying attention to how many guys cleared it there. but So we said that was... That was Andrew. Andrew. Mm -hmm. And here's Jeff. Uh, see, this is where we got to really start paying attention to make sure... You know, we don't pass pass by someone who's already cleared it. All right. Tyler, did you have? Ooh, 13.8. Just turned some long jump action, so I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my screen instead of the pole vault that's in front of me. At that time, Jeff did miss that height.
Watch it. Here's Mike again. Just saw a jump, I believe, from Milford. So I'm going to go ahead. 13, two and three quarters, I believe that was Annalise. And back on pole vault, Micah just made a, a vault and he did, did hit the bar, but it stayed up. His body hit it or the, the pole? I think his body hit it. Okay. I looked up just in time to see it uh, bouncing around yep. there. Yeah, it's about the I believe that was Hanover. Daisy, senior of Hanover, on the long jump. So that attempt looked a little bit better for Cole Brown. Uh, still something not quite right with it, but work in progress. Yeah, I'm back around the order now. It's a legal attempt from Bo on long jump. Charlotte, freshman. I can't get to record you. So you can see how to change. And it looks like Andrew just made it over the bar. He looked happy about it too. Yeah. <laughs> how could you not be happy? Yeah, exactly. I can't get to record you so you can so see. Ty is PR. About 25 minutes before uh, the track starts. Just another update on that. So Cole Brown takes a jump. I believe that was Josie Malloy. Got a glare on my screen, so has a little bit of a challenge. Natalie Sicard was a bit behind the board there, but still a legal jump. <laughs> Looks like Jeff just missed his uh, third attempt. Is it three you get? Yep, All right. three attempts. And then obviously, be clear, you go to the next site. Yep. And, you know, get a, get a fresh start, more or less. They get a little bit more technical with passes and things, but we're not there yet. This is Charlotte again. Although the first one might have been Sabrina from flight number one. She might have had to check out, go somewhere else. Not 100% sure. There's only one bow athlete in each. And it looks like Alex is not going to make it on his third attempt. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, that's, that's one of the things, high jump pole vault, you know. You always end on a miss. Yep. <laughs> um, and again, starting height of nine when your best ever is, you know, somewhere around there, mm -hmm. it can be a challenge. Yeah, it's tough with a starting height like that and having all these, all these guys where you need to have, you know, a good day in order to, uh, to keep moving on. Yeah. Just saw Bo with a uh, foul there. I'm going to assume it's Charlotte, but can't be certain. Apologies if it's not. Could be Sabrina. Now I'm going to say this is probably Joseph of Bo who's going up now. We're at, we're moving up. I think it should be 9-6 now. Yeah, that's right. Uh, pole vault's going to keep moving up six inches at a time until it's down to one. Wow, that was a really good, uh, good vault. He got over the bar and then had the knowledge to push the bar out as soon as he got over there as it was going towards the... Yep, that's that's one of the things that, you know, as your form improves, you start getting a little bit better at, as we saw Maya Thomas of Goffstown. Next on the runway should be Wander, the sophomore of West, top seed in this at 17 feet. There's another... 
completion. Uh, that looks... Actually, that might have been Liam who just made it before, and this could be uh, Joseph now. I think that was Bo again. As I'm guessing, this is going to be Nicholas for Lebanon. And that was not West, that was Milford. So we're back to the top. And that would be Annalise Milford. Ah, very easy completion for Lebanon there. Hey, you're here. Wish that all the field eventers had uh, seed stickers so we can know who's who. Yeah, do it, do it like college where they got the bib number on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hanover. Again, that's Daisy. So it's probably Wyatt. Josie Malloy. Couldn't quite hear that yeah, distance. Performance board still hasn't changed, so I'm not sure if maybe they're still at nine feet or if they did move it up. Natalie Sicard with the jump. I feel like the official switched sides on me and now I can't uh, hear quite as much. <laughs> Just barely over. From what I can see, there's a bit of a pause in pole vault right now. Not sure what's going on. Well, if the performance board's at nine feet, have you seen the bar go up at all? I thought I saw them doing something with it. I don't know if they were moving it up or maybe adjusting it or something like that, but. The guys did switch, and there was a, a string of, you know, seven or so guys were going, and then a whole new group. So my only thought that. is if the bar hasn't gone up, they could be waiting for an athlete who had checked out. Could be. Um, however, once all the other athletes have gone at this height, they're essentially on a clock to get back, and if they don't get back in time, they will move up. Athletes not eliminated, but... Uh, all of a sudden has to jump six inches higher than what they were planning on. Yep, and we got another Cobra round back up. All right. This is Wyatt, I believe? Yep. We have confirmed this is Wyatt. Right so I here. think I think that's what it was, and I had a feeling that's what it was because we saw the pole vault coach there, uh, Coach Tangway, talking to the official. Gonna miss it on the way down, got the bar. I tell you, the, the first jump after running over there, you know, part of it's just to like reset the clock, reset the nerves, so it's almost like you have to you wash it anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I'm probably going to step off and head over to the track events now. They're so starting up soon. Oh, you're bailing 17 minutes early. Okay, I guess I'll stay for another... Uh, I'm sure Davio knows uh, a thing or two about yeah, pole vault. He's Davio done it before. Know. Yeah, so why am I on here if Davio's got that knowledge? I guess I volunteered. I, I might have volunteered you, <laughs> if I recall, but it's okay. And over again. It's a foul, unfortunately, for her. And why it's over that one. It doesn't look like he landed all too comfortably, but he did get over it. I'll say not the, the cleanest form, uh, hence the a little bit slow to get up on the shoulder. Looked like Oyster River there. That'd be Avery, freshman of Oyster River. Don't mind Davio. Yeah, your mic's on. What? He cranked it all the way up. Instead of turning it off, Tyler Sheedy turned it all the way up. That uh, explains why I was hearing what I was hearing. Was that him or was that you? <laughs> Josie, legal jump. <laughs> Could work on her uh, landings. I might have to talk to her about that at some point. All right, we're back. Yeah. Oh, except I can't see anything from this seat. Yeah, you can't really sit down. I would go against the fence for it. I don't know why you wouldn't. Yeah. You might want to stand up. <laughs> Natalie. Great spot on the board. Nice looking jump, too. Show their bellies. There's definitely room for improvement, but we'll see what. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to hear it anymore. Just some people kind of talking over it, and the official facing the other way now. Might uh, turn that audio off for a moment. Okay. Co Brown up again. This is still Wyatt, right? As we see Bo with their attempt. The foul. This is not Wyatt. It's not Wyatt. Does that mean we're up to Zach or Finn? Zach, maybe? Uh, this is Zach, yeah. Yeah. That looked like Zach. Looked like Zach's uh, height with it. So we've kind of cruised down the list. I might, might have missed some things. Maybe he was just decided to come in at this height a little bit later. Just a uh, jump from Avery. Again, freshman, one of the two freshmen in this second flight. There was one freshman in flight number one. So that means three of the 16 qualifiers and girls long jump for freshmen. Maya Thomas on the runway now, senior. Comes in ranked second for D2. Just barely gets that toe on the board. Clean jump. And looks like we had a miss in pole vault. Did you catch who that was? I believe that was Andrew of St. Thomas. Yeah, so he's coming in at uh, nine feet. So trying to match his PR. That might have been his third attempt too. I think I've seen at least one or two from him. He's still talking to his coach about it, so I have one more. Oyster River, Avery. 
Again, freshman comes in top mark of 16 feet two inches. Just saw another miss in the pole vault. Yeah, just barely bumped into the bar on the way down. I believe that was Liam of Bo. And we have Micah of Oyster River up next in pole vault. Officials gathering in long jump makes me think we're all done with prelims and be moving on to finals momentarily. But we'll keep that on screen as they sort that out. It's all good. Are you leaving? Oh, we have a clear from Micah. Didn't look bad there. Yeah, so he's um, seated at 9.7, so he has cleared that height before. And we have Owen of Sauhegan on the runway now. First running event will be the girls four by He had some room there as well. So again, uh, triple jump has not started yet, so we can't actually show you triple jump. Uh, Chris is usually right. And I will say we do have uh, some select field events getting recorded, I believe. Should probably confirm that before I say that. Uh, can't cover all of them. Unfortunately, at least not this year. Oh, that had some height. Yeah, that was uh, easy clear. That's Joseph Bo. Form left uh, a little to be desired, but you can see why he comes in with a 10-6 on the season. Yeah, he had some room there. Who's up now? I believe this is Jack of Conval. Does that look like Conval to you? It does. All right. Maybe Jack. Oh, he yeah. It, no problem. Oh, he's got another two, three feet. He might, uh, I mean, I know he comes in at 10-7, but yeah, that I. Looked, that looked pretty good. I. That was easily over 11, if you ask me. So, but a couple quick messages from the NHIAA. From free checking to the right savings accounts for your whole family, Service Credit Union is there for all your financial needs. More, Learn more at servicecu.org forward slash NHIAA. Just saw Finn Hill with an attempt at the pole vault. Unfortunately for him, unsuccessful. Injuries and illnesses don't have appointments, so neither should you. Convenient MD is ready for whatever brings you in your 8 a.m., 8 p.m., seven days a week, and no appointment needed. 
With over 30 locations in the region, expert care for both kids and adults is just around the corner. I'm going to go ahead and stop reading those as uh, I might have to take a quick break and talk to our head timer today. Rick Berryman at Lancer Timing. For all of your uh, timing results today, you can get live results, including live splits at lancertiming.com. You'll see a link right on that homepage for the Division II meet. As soon as they have results for field events, those get entered in there as well, in case you're curious and wondering. So again, check out lancertiming.com. I believe that was Hunter of Milford clearing nine feet, which would be a PR for him by one quarter of an inch. Coming in at eight, 11 and three quarters. So gets that quarter inch PR. Greg, we had a PR. Sweet, who was it? It was Hunter of Milford. PR'd by one quarter of an inch. All right, I'm really confused because I've already seen him do nine feet. So they must have moved it up to nine six. And he cleared it. He, yeah, he. I thought, uh, yeah, we saw him clear it. Oh, on the. All right. The one before him was Milford, though, right? I think I think we're up to nine six at this point. Interesting. I'm pretty sure we are. Let's see if I can get Tyler uh, Sheedy's attention. Nope. <laughs> That's not going to work. Let's see if we can't get an update from the field. Performance board that we can see still says nine, but Tyler was in charge of watching the, the bar go up, and he wasn't sure. Davio's on it. He's going to call one of our other field reporters. However, they might not answer him. Bo with a miss there. Just a few minutes away from the track, kicking off. Is it 9-6 now? Yep. Yeah, we knew it. It's 9-6. I knew he already had it. See, you're not wrong, though. He did still get that PR, so that just was not nine feet. Six and a quarter inch yeah. PR. I knew he had it. Yeah, even better. Hey, if you're going to PR, you know, today's the day to do Twice it. Twice in a row. Well, we saw his first jump, and, Ooh, you know, he was... was he was well over it when he, he made it. What was that, um, Sauhegan? Was that Owen? Yeah, just he, brushed the bar. Yeah, but he clears that 9-6 mark. Who's this Wyatt up on Cobrown? Test, test, there we go. Oh! We have Finn of Co-Brown. Yeah. He clears it, no problem. Kids 
Post miss. Okay, we've got the 4x800 going on right now. we got Coe Brown, Hanover, Merrimack Valley, Plymouth Regional, Lebanon, Sauhegan, Bo, Kennett, and Hollis Brookline. Coe Brown comes in with a 10-24, Hanover with a 10-43. So those are the two teams we're probably going to look at today. But you never, you never know who's going to stack the deck. Those are times based on the uh, season. We're, today we're trying to win championships. Looking at the names Coe Brown has on their uh, official list, a lot of these girls are running races later. Sheldon Fisher's and at least a couple, uh, at least one. She'd be one of the ones I would wonder if she's actually in here today. Davi, you know? I don't know actually. I'm trying to see if she's over there on the uh, on the sideline there. But you see Mallory Taylor. Yeah. I think she's she would be the anchor, so she'd be all the way at the end, and I can't see that far down. So. Anyways, Cobra's going to scrap up as many points as they can, so this is the one race that you may see some real good runners in here that they'll spread out. As you know, we can only run four events in high school. Plymouth leading that lap. Plymouth's got a pretty good team building up there. It's, uh, they started to show themselves pretty well. A lot of names you'd recognize from the cross country season. England sisters, if you're saying that right, they, they stand out. Yeah, they're very good this, this, this fall. You know, there's only nine teams in this race, top six score. So if you move up a place or two, that could, you know, that might be a, might be a couple of points you weren't expecting to get. Yeah, there's some opportunities. Well, today is definitely probably the best day of the three that we've broadcast on. It's not a lot of uh, wind. It's a, almost a perfect day all the way around. Yeah, it's Flag's pretty, not it's moving. It's pretty nice here. <laughs> Should still be decently warm for the sprints and then cool off uh, a lot for the 32 later. So Plymouth still got the lead, about five meters. Coming in at 233. 235 for Cole Brown. Merrimack Valley in third. Followed by Bo. Hollis Brookline, Sauhegan, Hanover, Lebanon, Kennett. Yeah, so the back end of those points positions is going to be really tight. There's a lot of teams in it. They're going to be fighting for that 5 6 spot. Sheldon is not. She's not here. Yep. So she'll be in the probably mile, two mile, right? Today. I believe she's entered in both, yes. Alexis Powell, Co Brown, and Claire Ballou, and Paula Cookline. Those are eight finalists. Co Brown has closed the gap. 
definitely a two team race right now, but that can all change. We're still early on in this four by eight. Merrimack Valley pretty much by themselves. And then you got the rest of the pack. It's a 16 second lead for Plymouth and Co. Brown before MV came through. That's pretty significant. Yep. Well, six, six of the nine teams in the back still pretty tightly tightly packed together, at least relative for a race of this length. Plymouth maintaining that lead. Actually opened it up a little bit. See if Mallory Taylor of Cole Brown can close that gap. But I'll tell you what, Plymouth is Plymouth's on a roll here. Merrimack Valley got passed out by Sauhegan, so Sauhegan's in third. Merrimack Valley's in fourth now. Followed by Lebanon. Bo, Hollis, Brookline, and Hanover. Plymouth still extending that lead. Well, Mallory's starting to come on though. It's 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 I think it's gonna tighten up here. Taylor's looking strong coming into her final lap. So it should be a good, pretty good race to finish this off. Clearly a two-team race. Yeah. No one else is going to make that gap up. Merrimack Valley slid back into third. Sow Egan. That's over 30 seconds between the two lead teams in that chase pack right there. So. Wow, so they really poured it on. More separation in that back, back of the pack as well. All right, so Taylor's gonna come through here. The Big gap. She put on a huge second lap. She's going to hand off with, what, 30, 40 meters almost. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what she got for a split there. See what she, she did her job. A great leg from her. Plymouth so coming through for its final leg. 233. Yeah. Boy, that really opened it up hard, though, huh? Yeah, it was uh, about a 13-second difference on that on that Again, split. Merrimack Valley handing off. Boy, that gap changed out too. That's the thing about the four by eight. You know, it's it's the first event, but you got to kind of play your cards right on how you, and where you put people and where you're gonna use them for the rest of the day. So that's the one event where the seed times don't always correlate to where it's gonna really stand. All right, 
That's all the teams now have their anchors on the track. Co Brown coming in for the bell lap. So basically a 10 second lead right now. So looks like Cole Brown will pick up their first 10 points of the day. And there's no Oyster River team in here, so this will give them a little 10 point cushion. It's a little bit surprised by that, seeing how strong they are in the, the distance events in general. So Hollis Brooklyn and Sohegan right now are 5-6. They're hanging on to the last scoring spots. Julia from Bowes making up a bit of a gap. Chasing for that final point. Cole Brown, you can see on the screen, is on the final straightaway. Plymouth actually closed it up a little bit, though. It's no longer a 10-second gap. Well, so this is going to be a, a season best for Cole oh. Brown. I was looking at the wrong girl. That's Kenneth. Unofficially a eight-second season best for Cole Brown. Nice. Plymouth fi finishing up second with 10-16 for Cole Brown. Plymouth outdoing its seed, seeded fourth, finishing second. 10-31-21. Merrimack Valley finishing in third, Lebanon fourth. Merrimack Valley 10.53.07, Lebanon 10.57.26. Hollis Brookline and Sauhegan to complete our scoring. Bo will come in seventh. Hanover's another team I thought would have put up a really stud team. They get some, they had like, quite a good cross country season. Hanover eighth. Kennett will be ninth. Yeah. Hanover is the number two seed, so it looks like they might have opted to save some of their some of their faster runners for fresher legs in the individual events. And I always kind of, I always kind of wish the relays were a little bit weighted, you know, a little bit more points, maybe 12 or 15. All right, you've got a bigger heat. 12 teams for the boys out on the track now. We got Cole Brown, we got Lebanon, Goffstown, Sauegan, Milford, Hanover, Pembroke, Oyster River, St. Thomas, Aquinas, Merrimack Valley, Bow and Kennett. Top seed comes in with Cole Brown, 754.81. That's probably one of the all-time fastest times but that was a different crew of guys. This team is still good, but it's not the 754 team. Lebanon comes in with an 820, and Goffstown impressed me last week over at Londonderry. Uh, it comes in with an 824, Sao Egan 827. Yeah, I mean, I think if this uh, Cobram crew runs, runs well today, they could still run under 815. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, I, they're still the favorite. This Goffstown team's pretty tough, though. But again, where they stack in the deck last week and using guys in places, we're just putting up a good time. Looks like Milford may be running out front early. Pushing it pretty hard from the start. Ready to begin the warm-up 
So we got Gosstown. Gosstown. Go through right at 60. They're going to be tough to beat. They gave Bedford. They led Bedford through 1,200 last last week. It doesn't sound like much, but Bedford was a good team. They. Brown joined that uh, Top duo three. up front. So Lebanon, Goffstown, Co Brown, the top three, followed by Milford. Hanover, Sauhegan, Kennett, St. Thomas, Oyster River, and Pembroke. Merrimack Valley, and Bow. You know, looking at this start list, it's a pretty big spread between the first seed, Co Brown, that's sub eight, and then Kennett in at the 12th seed with 10 minutes. So. First handoffs fairly clean, but we'll see how that how that goes in the middle legs. Might get messier when you have teams at very different points, teams on different laps as they're coming through the yeah. line. Yeah, sometimes it's it's good because you catch a kid on his first lap and you're finishing up your second lap, and that kid runs a good first lap and you can latch on. Levin and Cole Brown and Goffstown. And Milford's moving up there. Milford's in the fight now. Comes Lebanon leading Cole Brown. Almost looks like a two team race now again. See if Goffstown and Milford could tighten it back up. So Egan, Hanover. Pembroke's making a showing. Looks like Cole Brown's going to take the lead over in the, the corner. See if he gets there before the turn. Just about. Cole Brown finishing with a 202 guy. Uh, 201 low, I think, 201. this year, yeah. So he's having a pretty good year for himself. Yeah. Milford's right on Gosstown's shoulder now. They got two, two good battles going on. First and one for third. Lebanon starting to pass wow. Cole Brown now. It's a good race. I like that this a battle for first and a battle for third. Yeah. 
This, sh this should be interesting right here with Lebanon take with Lebanon with a little bit of lead. This is really going to make him work his split. Like you say, we got other we got other teams on 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 the race, so there's a few moving picks there too. You can sometimes you can use the the, the slower teams when you're coming up. Like Co Brown's making up some time. Yeah, he's making it up pretty quickly too. Yeah, they're starting to go around people here, so he's definitely getting. It's going to get. We got one more person to go around, and after that, I think they're going to have. They'll be clear. Yeah, they got about a hundred meters of track after that. Yep. So they'll be good. Co Brown is in the lead now. We'll just see if that was too big a move. I don't know, they look, both look pretty comfortable. Goffstown is now in third. They've pretty much dropped Milford at this point. Wow, this is shaping up to be a great finish. That was a 57-5 by Cobrown, 59-2 by Leb. Lebanon just came up and almost drew even with him. He didn't quite use that... Uh, That's where, right there is where you could set a moving pick if you, if you hook quick. I don't know, this is gonna be good. Lebanon's coming hard. Looks like Lebanon's gonna take this. Let's see if Cole Brown has got one more surge. No, he doesn't. Lebanon. That's an excellent time. Lebanon takes that 810.80. Wow. Goffstown just coming through in third. Milford. Cole Brown was 812. Goffstown 817. Milford 820. 201 on that final split from Lebanon. Yeah, he played his cards right. I think the. Cole Brown just made up too much in that first lap, and it, sometimes that's what happens. I think I would rather be riding in second oh, place. Oh, is Pembroke going to get? Pembroke. Pembroke going to steal that last scoring spot. Nice job for them. Running all the way through the finish. Sixteen hundredths of a second. Pembroke had over over Sauhegan for the sixth and final point or scoring spot That's good rather. For them. Yeah, certainly outperforming what they were coming in ranked as. It's like Goffstown in a 158 final leg. Wow, that's pretty good. So that was probably the fastest leg of anybody. Yeah, I think so. Looks like it. Oyster Both River sure. out of the scoring. Which, if you're Co Brown, Oyster River is the team to keep an eye on. A team that could could challenge them. Yeah, that was an, that was exciting. I had a feeling that that was going to happen, though, because when, when you close that much up that quick, you got to really open the gap. If not, you they can come back and bite you. All right, we got a few announcements to make um, from Granite State Dairy. Low-fat chocolate milk contains 8 grams of natural high-quality protein in each 8-ounce glass to help rebuild muscles after strenuous exercise. Learn more from our partners at nhdairypromo.org and refuel with chocolate milk. From the New Hampshire National Guard, members of the Army National Guard don't give up and they do whatever it takes to achieve success. Find your success in the Army National Guard. Visit nationalguard.com forward slash NH and be on the lookout for upcoming Guardians of the Granite State event where your student athletes could win scholarships and more. 
from UNH Army ROTC. Go beyond your field of study and get a world-class education in leadership. As an arm, Army officer, you'll learn to be a decision maker and a mentor in any environment at any scale. It's a challenging path, but the choice is simple. Decide to lead at goarmy.com forward slash officer. To learn more about Ar Army ROTC, contact your local scholarship and enrollment officer, Joseph LaPlante, via email at joseph.laplante at unh.edu or by telephone at 603-602. 862-7075. Hey, you know that whole thing about chocolate milk? I actually went home last night because I learned that from you last night. I went home and had a big glass of chocolate milk. I feel like 100% better today. <laughs> I really do. Chocolate milk's great. I love chocolate milk. No, it's nothing better than chocolate milk. I remember we used to have um, like gallon jugs of chocolate milk in the uh, in the fridge at the, at the shed yep. at Co Brown. And uh, after workouts, I'll pour everyone a glass of chocolate milk. I've never had a cup of coffee in my life, but I've drank many gallons of chocolate <laughs> milk. <laughs> Love it. All right, let's get these boys underway. We got uh, Thomas of Pembroke, Aguila Hong of Hanover, Reynolds of Merrimack Valley, Giardini, Giordani of Oyster River, Henderson of Sowegan, Bassett of Oyster River, Wallace of Merrimack Valley, and Savasco of Milford. 1545 Cole Henderson comes in as the favorite in this heat. Oyster River with three competitors, two in this first heat, one in the second. Yeah, they always have a good hurdling program. Yeah, this gonna, they're going to try to get some points here. It's a good opportunity on their home track. But Henderson's in command of this heat. Oh, yeah, he's ripping. He looks good. So Henderson takes that in 1608. The set 1674 of Oyster River, Wallace of Merrimack Valley, 1770. Merrimack Valley, another program that historically has produced very good hurdlers. Yeah, they've had some good ones over the years. Winner of each heat and the next best six qualifying for the finals. Second heat, we got Thomas of John Stark, LaRoche of Merrimack Valley, Lamontang of Lebanon, Ahern of Plymouth Regional, Powell of Hanover, Post of Conval, Pazinski of Sauhegan, and Faila of Oyster River. Aiden Powell comes in with 1595, Cole Ahern of the 16 flat. Lanes four and five. <laughs> All right, we have a, uh, a question from the chat. Addison Cox wants to know, who is on the mic? So I will introduce, introduce yourself. Myself. I am Davio DeLuca. Addison, I hope you know that. Uh, Jim I'm Dana Torrey. Oh, that's first what your time, name is? First time, All right. uh, first time broadcaster. Very excited to do this. Where are you from, Dan? I am uh, typically here in a reporting role at the Concord Monitor. Right. So Capital Area teams, Bo, MV, Pembroke, Stark, the ones I have more knowledge of. Looks like Ooh. Ahern's going to take that one. He really popped one there. So Ahern takes a 15.84. They're happy, huh? Yeah, we got the crowd excited. He went under 16. Looks like the second heat was a slightly quicker group collectively. So Aaron, 1584, Powell, 1620, Post, 1703, Lamontagne, 1761, Pazinski, 1817, 1844 for LaRoche, 1962 for Ayla, and Thomas is 1980. Yeah. So yeah. Cole, Cole Aaron was seated at 1600, so I think. Yeah, he popped uh, one. That was exciting to break that barrier. So he'll be challenging for the title. Triple jump. 
Merrimack Valley with two, sneaking into the finals in the seventh and eighth spots. It's pretty funny to see the Reynolds name in there as a hurdle or not a right. distance runner. You had the three siblings. For, uh, you had Matt Reynolds, you had David Reynolds, and you had Queen Reynolds. She won more titles than all of them, I think. She, told, she did really well for herself. She was pretty good on the hurdles, though. Yeah, remember that 300 hurdles yeah. that she did? That was probably one of the races. And then she, I think she won her last race. Remember the, uh, wasn't the 3200 she came up, surprised everybody to end her career at Meet of Champions? Do you remember that? I, I, I actually do. I think it was a, she popped one. Check, check that out. Sophia Reynolds. No, I, just I remember because I actually think I might have cried. It was actually a great moment because she started off so great in her career and then she kind of fell off fell off a little bit and then she came back and I think it was her very last race in New Hampshire that she won. Is that correct? Am I wrong? I know I'm not wrong. Girls 100 hurdles. Hurdles have been adjusted. Girls are on the track. Look for Zoe Wall of Pembroke. Different style, but she's doing it, and she's she's taking it. Nice job. So Zoe Wall took that in 1717. Ballad of Lebanon, 1756. Matter of Hanover, 1831. Siltnik of St. Thomas, 1857. Engel of Hollis Brookline, 1907. Delaney of Merrimack Valley, 1965. You find it yet? Hang on. I'm pulling up right now. He too, we got Conaro of Milford, Mapala of Oyster River, Flynn of Plymouth Regional, Sicard of Co Brown, Dow of Hollis Brookline, Leak of Merrimack Valley. Corbett of John Stark and Thomas of Pembroke. She won the 1600. 1600? Yeah. Her last race, right? Yeah. Senior year, Muni Champions. Beat uh, Haley Cavanaugh by one second. Yeah, that was a great one. Great kick. She won the 3200 her freshman year. Right. And there was a big gap in the yeah. of not a lot of what, what we were accustomed to. Because she finished second in cross country in New England's. Yeah. She was an absolute powerhouse. But her persistency got her back on top again. Wow, this now is a tight five one. Five getting challenged by Sicard. Dow takes that in 1691. Sicard 1728. Leak of Merrimack Valley 1815. Flynn of Plymouth Regional 1899. Corbett. John Stark 1948. Mapala. Mapala. Oyster River 2014. Thomas Pembroke 2026. Canaro of Milford 2468. Well, this is going to be an interesting one also. So last time I reported D, um, Ty Doro had a, uh, a leg issue at the uh, real track meet in Londonderry. We thought maybe, uh-oh, that could have been the season. And Ty Doro is expected to win three events today. So we'll see how he performs. He's the heavy favorite. Comes in with a 10.92. Lane one, we got Cad Wallader of Conval, Shane of Halls Brookline, Wilson of Milford, Keene of Plymouth Regional, Doro of Oyster River, Valencia of West, Hausch of Halls Brookline, and Diamond of Manchester West. Doro, the only sub 11 runner in the field. 
pretty big gap between him and the top seed of the next heat. Edwin Rodriguez of West with an 11.22, or 11.24, excuse me, seed time. I think Doro has actually the second fastest time overall in the state. Only Chris Stevens of Keene has run faster. It'd be interesting to see how much he uh, pushes that leg if it is yeah. still an issue. I think he could cruise probably 90% and, and have a good chance of winning the seed. He seeded over half a second faster than the next. Yeah quickest in this heat, so there's a little bit of time, but. Oh, he looks good. Nope, that's it, he's done. Looks like Milford took it, that's it. That stinks. So Wilson of Milford, 1174. Keene of Plymouth Regional, 1175. Cadwallader of Conville, 1189. Shane of Halls, Brookline, 1190. Hesh of Halls, Brookline, 1190. Valencia of Manchester, 1192. Doro, Oyster River, 1751. Diamande of Manchester did not start. So that's too bad because I'll tell you what, that, that if you don't, if, if Oyster River doesn't have him. That sets him back a lot of points. A lot of points. That's just too bad because he, he, he actually is a great kid. And, ah, that stinks. All right, next heat we've got Featherstone of Conval, Asuga of Lebanon, Willette of Oyster River, Edwards of Conval, Rodriguez of Manchester, Bruno of Halls, Brookline, McCraney of Bow, Walcott of Kennett. Rodriguez comes in with 11.24 and now it, presumably the favorite, along with Kendrick Edwards, 11.27. Yeah, it makes things a little bit closer now though. You hate to see that though, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I just, I mean, he was the favorite in three events. Yeah. In your senior year, right, he's a senior, so. It's gonna be a close heat. It's four guys. It's like Edwards and Rodriguez. Wow, Edwards just by a whisker. Ooh, little tumble at the end. Edwards takes that in 11:43. Will let a voice river 11:48. Bruno of Halls Brookline, 11.56. Rodriguez of Manchester, 11.72. McCraney of Bow, 11.86. Walcott of Kennett, 11.89. Featherstone of Conval, 12.07. Asuga, 11 12.08. So Wilson with 11.74 in that first heat with the fastest time. You have four guys in the second heat below that. Wow. So the girls, 100, we got Raposa of Kingswood, Conishuk of Oyster River, Amiot of Pembroke, McNeil, Conval, Chavda, Co Brown, Giordano, Milford, U, Oyster River, Barry, Oyster River.
Trav that comes in on the 12.53, McNeil 12.85. They're off. It's like Chav is in control of this one. Giordano looks like we're going to take second on that one. So Chavda, Co Brown takes that 1240. Twelve eighty one she ended up with. Giordano of Milford, thirteen twelve, McNeil of Conval, thirteen twenty six. Poza, Kingswood, 1367. U of Oyster River, 1367. Amiot, Pembroke, 1385. Kunishuk, Oyster River, 1403. Barry of Oyster River, 1425. Looking at the results of the boys' 100 qualification, the difference between Tyler Walcott, eighth and final qualifier from Kennett, 11. 887, ninth Anthony Cadwallader of Conval, 11.888. Wow. One thousandth of a <laughs> second thousandth. to get into that, to get into that final. <laughs> McNicholas of Oyster River is in lane one, La Rochelle two of Bo, Mc McPhee of Kingswood lane three, Cardi of Oyster River lane four, Wheat, Kennett, Lane five, Nassie of Milford, six, Watson, Plymouth Regional, seven, Merrick of Hanover is an eight. Eight a week comes in with a 12.54. Eight a week was last year's champion. And she's going to win that heat. Wheat, Kennett, 1251. That's what she ran. She ran 100 seconds slower than she did last year to win it. Cardi, Oyster River, 1269. McPhee, Kingswood, 1324. Nassie of Milford, 1326. Watson, Plymouth Regional, 1376. La Rochelle of Bow, 1389. Merrick of Hanover, 1398. And McNick. Nicholas Oyster River 14-34. So Wheat's going to look looks pretty good to defend her title. Cardi gave her a pretty stiff challenge, though. Yeah, she's right there. Both of them with a pretty decent gap over the rest of the field in that heat. And then throw in Chavder of Cole Brown. Should be a pretty exciting race. Chad the throw in a 12.81. So the hurdle crew putting the hurdles back out on the track for the finals. A little chilly here tonight. I like it. at the pole vault right now. They're up to 10-6. It's like a smaller, smaller group of competitors still in that event at this point, as you'd expect.
another photo finish for the final spot in the girls 100 meters. Kylie Raposa of Kingswood, 13.665 seconds. Amanda Yu from Oyster River, 13.670. So five thousandths of a second wow. in that one. That's why we have Lancer timing here to make sure we get those, get those close calls right. I'm on the Lancer Timing website right now, and if you click on somebody's name in an event, it tells you all of their results from all their other events. That's pretty cool. I did not know that was a thing. How long have they done that? Oh. That's pretty cool. All these athletes in the sprints and hurdles you're going to see on the track for several events. Easier, typically easier to double, triple, even quad up when you're doing the shorter distances. So, looking at Anushka Chavda, who's down here for four events. <laughs> yeah. One, two, four, triple. Aaron Cardi's down here for five. I don't know if that's right. Hurdles, dash, two, four, three hundred hurdles. It's a, it's a packed day. Yeah, she's pretty good in a lot of events. That makes sense. Co Brown and Oyst River, the two teams on the girls' side that look to be the in the hunt for the team title. Of course, anything can happen, but based on the seedings, that's where so the two favorites coming in. Yeah, and so because of that, like they're gonna want, you know, their top athletes to do as many events as possible, just to maximize the points. Because I, I mean, even if you're, you know, super tired by your third, fourth event, if you can get out a couple extra points, and that's more than you would have gotten. So. So it's going to be an inter interesting uh, 100 meter hurdles, though. Gray Style comes in with a 16.91. Zoe Hall, 17.17. 17. Zoe Hall's form's a little, little um, unique, but she gets the job done and uh, kind of, kind of rooting for her a little bit. And yeah, the Pembroke uh, girls program, especially, has come a long way in the last few years. It sure has. We've got a lot of qualifiers here and a lot of distance events, or a lot of different events. Gabriel 
So do you think the lights are going to come on tonight? I bet they will. <laughs> I think we're going to have to. Uh, it's 10 of 7 right now, and we've still got a good amount of the running yeah. program left to go. So that would be a first for me. I have not in any capacity been at a track meet under the lights. Yeah, you're not afraid of the dark, right? No. No? no it's, uh, right, I've run. I've run. Run some races in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> Running the 3200 and 4x4 four four with some flurries. Huh. It's been dark, but never never under the light, so that would be. Yeah, it'd be something though. That'd be pretty cool. Kind of fun. I think the kids get a little excited too with the lights, you know. It's uh, the, the only, uh, I think it's Banadnock that does a uh, Twilight meet where they they start late intentionally to do it's, the it. it's the only one I know of that goes that late by design I think it always makes you feel like you run faster at night <laughs> for me it helps with the heat in the yeah. late spring too. When, I was in, when I was in high school I did, did a lot of training at night there was a guy that I kind of uh kind of like a hero of mine or whatever his guy's name was Mark Ninao and they called him the Night Stalker he would never do uh, not the same Night Stalker as the serial killer Night Stalker but uh, he was the he would do all his runs at night and he'd do his speed works all on the road at night and he was the top I don't know for a few years there, he was the top road racer from the United States but it was pretty, pretty cool actually his son is a very good runner now I think he's I think Aiden Cox has battled him few times. Oh, that's cool. Oh. But yeah, uh, I think it'll be good. At least when it gets dark out, usually it's not as windy. Yeah. It looks pretty good. It looks like a good day. I was in a little, I was talking, I'm talking to, to Rick from Lancer. He's asked me where was I. I was in a little shack with Tyler Sheedy, not a shack, but a uh, trailer with Tyler Sheedy and Greg, yes. Never came up. It was just, it, I felt like we were ice fishing in there. Right? Yeah. We were all nice and warm and everybody else was. Well, I couldn't believe how warm it was in there. I yeah. was outside under the tent, but uh, it was cold and wet and horrible and then uh and then when we were packing up i went in the trailer to start breaking stuff down and it was nice it was in there. really nice in there i came out of there after everybody was soaked i said does anybody in the rain had already stopped does anybody need some dry clothes <laughs> oh my god still rick the greatest one of all time was the Division Three meet in Guilford with the lightning bolts oh, coming man. down. But you were, you were like the guy from Caddyshack. You were out there <laughs> gathering up all your gear with the lightning bolts. <laughs> no. But you remember remember the priest in, in Caddyshack? <laughs> he finally, <laughs> I'm having the race of my life. A lightning bolt comes down and gets him. <laughs> so that's what it was like. Oh yeah, that was crazy. And then the following week, we basically had a, we did it again, right, at Sanborn. Tents flying yeah. everywhere. Yeah, that was bad. God, that was crazy. Yeah, we lost a tent that day. The uh, name Track and Field tent went flying, and it was strapped to the fence too. Oh, yeah, and it just like bent the whole thing in half. I, I really believe these tents are the most dangerous things going. Yeah. We were at Lauk's games, and a few of them got away. And then they, they were in the air and landed in the stands. Wow. It's just crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That reminds me, I was... Uh, Code Brown with a really nice clear of the pole vault. Say so maybe 11 feet, it was 10-6 when I last looked. They've ch changed the angle of the, of the board, so I can't see it. But my guess would be it's at 11 now. Eleven feet. Eleven feet. So they're getting up there. Yeah, can't be too many people left at that height. Yeah, I blew away in a tent once. Oh, you did? I was camping, yeah. Hmm. Very sudden uh, windstorm. We were out in a field, and I was in the tent, and it blew away and rolled across the field. <laughs> Looks like we're down to, I think, four in the pole vault. Have, looks like Ben McDowell of Bo. I think heard someone say Cole Ahern from Plymouth still in it. Looks like two Co Brown. Governor was here earlier. Did you see that? I I did not, but I was also not at the uh, was not at the shot put. Yeah, his son earlier, was throwing so. the shot. And uh, speaking of perfect segue, it looks like those are the first first field event results in of the day, unofficially. Oh, and now now official Lebanon's Tanner Ames, 49 feet three Ooh, and a half inches, his one. best mark. First field event champion. Uh, so that gives the, still early, but Lebanon boys, two for two. Two events scored, two wins. Yeah, so Tanner Ames takes it of Lebanon. Hatch of Milford, came in the second with the 47, six and three quarters. Estani of Cole Brown, 45, two and three quarters. Volato of Pembroke, 44, four and a half. Calvin Sununu, 42-10, takes fifth place. St. Thomas Aquinas, Elias Warner, takes sixth place. And the last point scorer, 42-5 and a half. So Lebanon with a perfect 20 points right now. Commanding lead. Scored. Commanding. Still not that commanding. Co Brown through as uh, 15 yeah. points, so they're right. They're right in it. Yeah, I think Cole Brown's got a lot of points coming up here, <laughs> especially in the mile. I would think they, they would have a chance of taking maybe four out of five places there. I, I counted the points last night to kind of see who the favorites favorites would be. So based on seedings, Cole Brown was at 130. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Have a fan cam today? What was that? <laughs> It's funny. All right, so let's see here. We'll get to the 100 meter hurdles. We'll have Flynn of Plymouth Regional, Matter of Hanover, Ballard of Lebanon, Wall of Pembroke, Dow of Halls, Brookline, Sicard of Co Brown, Leek of Merrimack Valley, and Latsilnik of St. Thomas.
Guns up. It's like Dow. Wow, it's a close one. Ooh. Dow and Sicard. And w followed by Wall. Yeah, it was a bit closer than the prelims there. So Dow of Hollis Brookline, 16.55. Sicard, 16.60 of Cole Brown. Wall, Pembroke, 17.06. Ballard, Lebanon, 17.35. Leak, Merrimack Valley, 17.87. Matter, Hanover, 17.98. Lasilnik, St. Thomas, 1854. Flynn, Plymouth Regional, 1857. Yeah, run ran really well that, that heat. Boys 110 hurdles, last year's 2022 champ was Jackson Bomber of Wyndham. He took it in 1608. The Division II record is Damal McFadden out of Merrimack Valley. He was probably, he's all time either number one or number two hurdler ever from New Hampshire, along with Billy Powers. One has the 300 record, the other one has the 110 record. In this final, we're going to have Michael Reynolds of Merrimack Valley, Nicholas Montaigne of Lebanon, Michael Passett of Oyster River, Cole Henderson of Sowegan, Cole Ahern, Plymouth Regional, Aiden Powell, Hanover, James Post, Conval, Tyler Wallace, Merrimack Valley. Merrimack Valley's got the outside edges, got a couple guys in there. But this should be a tight one between Ahern, Henderson, and Powell. That's crazy to see Billy Powers would be two seconds ahead of Aaron. He was just a kink. I mean, That's he really nuts. was that good. No shame to, to, to Aaron. It was just Billy Powers was... Yeah, he was that good. He was so efficient. Yeah. I remember watching him race because he was in high school at the same time I was. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it was just crazy. And he wasn't that big a kid either. He was no. just, you know... I think he. I think when he ended up going to Cornell, the hurdles were a little bit higher. I think he might have. I don't know what happened, but I, I heard things that may struggle maybe with the, just a little bit of extra height or whatever. But as far as high school goes, man, he was the stud of studs. Yeah, he was just so smooth. Won the New England championships and second in the 300 the same year. Pretty good resume. Henderson looks like he got out good. Ooh. Nice. Wow. Cole Ahern just blew the field away. Yeah, those last, Look at that time. Those last couple of hurdles, Holy. he just extended that. So Ahern took that in 1528. Henderson, Sowegan, 1576. Powell of Hanover, 1589. Massette of Oyster River, 1674. Post Conval, 1728. One Wallace Merrimack Valley 1750 Reynolds Merrimack Valley 1777 Lamontade of Lebanon 1781 Ahern I mean he just ripped it he won by almost a half a second more than a half a second half a second half a second yep top three all faster than last year's winner yeah that so says something because Bomba was a good hurdler.
Aaron came in tonight with a 16 flat and popped a 15-28. Dropped almost three quarters of a second off this time. But that's adrenaline. That's getting against other good competitors. Yeah. You know, had a 15-8 in the prelims. Yeah, that's without the lights on. <laughs> yeah, imagine if the lights were on. You're right. We didn't even think of that. Okay, now we got the girls' 100. It's another good race right here. We've got Raposa of Kingswood, McNeil of Conval, Giordano of Milford, Chavda of Cobran, Wheat of Kennett, Cardi of Oyster River, McPhee of Kingswood, and Nassi of Milford. Looks like Ada Wheat and Chavda. Wheat's got the slight advantage, and Wheat's going to take it two years in a row. So Wheat takes that in 12.44. That's a great time. Ch Chavda, Cole Brown, 12.56. Giordano, Milford, 13.04. McPhee of Kingswood, 13.21. Nassie of Milford, 13.24. McNeil of Conval, 13.41. Reposer of Kingswood, 13.42. Yeah, so Wheat goes a little bit faster than her winning time last year. Cardi, they slid her number, it sl slid her in there as 1270, so she got third place for Oyster River. Everybody else take a step down. I think we could have had three in a row at one point. I think, was she the one that fault started three years ago? How do you remember these things? I don't know. It's just, that's why <laughs> they have me here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can look it up. I think she did. I think, because I, I, I. Okay, we got Walcott of Kennett, Keene of Plymouth Regional, Bruno of Bro Hollis Brookline, Wilson of Milford, Edwards of Conval, Willette of Oyster River, Rodriguez, and McCrane. Wow, oh. tough one. Maybe Looks like Edwards of Conval. I think the, the lean might have given it to I him. I don't know. That was close. So Willette of Oyster oh. River takes it by 100 second, 1136. Edwards of Conval, 1137. Rodriguez of Manchester, 1148. Bruno of Hollis Brookline, 1157. Keene of Ply Plymouth Regional, 1164. Wilson of Milford, 1171. McCraney of Bow, 1177. Walcott of Kennet, 1186. Great. Ada Wheat, false started. I, I'm just, I'm finals. just an idiot savant. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she was the, she had the fastest time in the prelims. Yep. And uh, at fall started in the final. How do you know that? <laughs> it just locks in, baby. <laughs> Girls 1600 lining up. Oyster River in the top two spots. Haley Cavanaugh, Mackenzie Cook. In the top two positions on their home track. Perriard of Hanover, Brochu from Bow, Fisher of Co. Brown, England of Plymouth, had a good leg in the 4x8. Bouchard of Hollis, Bramward, Depoy of Sauhegan, Taylor and Murdo of Co. Brown, Maine of Plymouth, Boyer of Plymouth, Barrier of Stark, Butler of Hollis Brookline, and Jennings and Taylor of Co. Brown, rounding out a 16 runner field. So no doubt about it, Oyster River has to have these, has to have this one too. I think uh, Hanover's Leah period is gonna be right there too. So Cook, Fisher, Perriard, England, Brochu, 
are all the top five seats of the 3200. So a lot of these runners we're gonna see again. Looks like a few might be doubling up for the 800 as well. Haley Kaffin on the top seed. A few of these girls are in the four by eight already. Yeah. We've got Not our first, most of the top names, but. We've got our first girls field events in for the day. Madeline Grenier of Code Brown winning the girls disc. Wow. 108, six. MV's Victoria League second, 105-11. Pretty quick here. They go through in 75 high. So that's a pretty hot pace early. So the Co-Brown girls with a couple of wins early. Getting a nice Nice bit of a lead. We should get a few more points in this event too. It's like the top five starting to separate themselves a little bit. These are both sophomores. Cook and Kavanaugh. It's a good, pretty good one-two punch they got. A lot of these girls raced against each other in indoor track. So you imagine by this point, between a few years, indoor, outdoor, cross country, they kind of know each other fairly well. How they race, what to look for. And they cooled off a little bit there. About an 81. So they're working together up front. Trading off the lead. Uh, I think at least twice they've done that so far. And so Perriard going right with them. Fisher a little bit off from them. And then Brochu right behind her. Wondering if anyone's going to make a move on Oyster River, if they're content to let Oyster River set the pace until the end. Periard is right there. There's another 81. Yeah, Periard still looks pretty comfortable, honestly. She looks very comfortable. It's like it could be a nice race for the final scoring spot. Yeah, and she hasn't really done any work this whole uh, this whole race. So she's gonna, I think she's going to make a move here. Mackenzie Cooks opened it up. Kavana held off. Perriard there nicely, heading into the corner. That's Kavanaugh leading. I messed you up, sorry about that. Perriard's making a pretty good move on Mackenzie Cook. Mackenzie Cook is going to go <laughs> wide. I love that stuff. Wow. Oh, wow. I don't know. I'll tell you what, that was good by her, though. You don't often see that happening in lanes two and three. She played her cards right. Kavanaugh takes that 509-32. Cook, 510-47. Very odd. 
5 10 48. Fisher, 522 05. Bouchard, Halls, Brookline, 525 27. 100 for second. England takes up the last score and plays 529.99. Brochure of Bow, 533.40. Cook played her cards perfect on the stretch. I mean, it wasn't, it, no way did she impede. She just basically migrated out to that lane, but nothing illegal. Yeah, Top three kept, all kept fast sliding the over. <laughs> you can't teach that stuff. That's, that's yeah, that perfect. Was pretty good. Great strategy. Congratulations to the Oyster River Girls. One, two. They needed those points. There were some good times, too. They closed in 71-72. Uh, wow, that's pretty good. All, uh, top three finishing faster than last year's winner. Susanna Zahn, if I remember correctly. Yep. Also to highlight Brooke Bouchard, who was in seventh most of the way, made a nice move to get into a fifth place scoring position. Did Zahn win that last year? Sheldon Fisher. I thought Sheldon Fisher. Uh, they, I, Fisher, Brochu, and Zahn were one, two, three. They were I last remember. year. I can't remember the order. Did Sheldon win it last year? I think so. I thought, I thought so. Zahn won one of them. That might have been the 32. Yes, yeah, that's I, what it was. I remember that's her what it was. winning something. That's yeah. what it was. So we have Aiden Cox, Gavin Demet, Gavin Dimas, Jamie Leno, Tyler Kazik, all of Cole Brown. <laughs> and you have Berhano Harriman, Owen Stein of Sowegan, Finley Irvin of Sowegan, Galen Norder of Sowegan, Thomas Wolf of Lebanon, Mac Levy of Hanover, Luke Karawek of Co Brown, Namala of Co Brown, Beverly of Bo, Baguidi of Goffstown, Corthels of Milford, and LeMay of Co Brown. So Aiden just went through the 200 in 30 seconds. Yeah, I think he just wants to get this gapped right off the bat. We've got six Co Brown, three South Egan, and two Lebanon, all in the top 12. It's a lot of teammates for these runners up front to be working with. As so Aiden go through in 61, and the main pack goes through in about 67. Oh, well, a lot of boys in that. Pierce Sane was our last year's champion, 15, uh, 4 15 56. Luke Kazik has a Division II record, 4 15 23. I wonder if Cox is going to try to take his teammates' mm -hmm. record down. I mean, at this pace, he's going to take uh, Pierce's state record down. He's still on at 132 through the uh, six. He's just killing it. This is a stacked year for the 16. I think it was the top. Yeah, this is pretty top, fast. <laughs> top 13 runners were all seated at 440 or below. That's that's ridiculous. You don't often see that. Right. Wow, 204. And then this battle is going to be very interesting. We got, what, there's like eight guys in there? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, right in that pack. And he's just ripping this open. Five, six, seven. Oh no, there's ten in that pack. Hey, yeah. He went through the thousand in about I don't know, two thirty-five, two thirty-six. All right, so uh, Brahanu's still leading that main pack there, but it looks like uh, that Kazik and Leno. Moved up onto his shoulder. 307. 307 through 1,200. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so that state record's going down hard right now. Not the state record, but the, the meet, division the record. Division meet record, yeah. That's going down. Tyler Kasich moving to second. Leno going to make a big move. Gavin Demas is playing his cards perfect. 
for a second place. Yeah, he's got that speed at the end, so. He's got no problem dropping like a 58 last lap or something ridiculous. Wow. I mean, look at this. I mean, that, that's a huge move by all three from Coke. He's got Brown. one straight away to go. This, 50, this 1600 division record's going down. Yeah, and Coe Brown's one through four right now. And they're starting to gap everybody else. Aiden runs 412. 12, 21. Look at this, Luke. I mean, uh, Tyler Kasich pouring it on. He's got a good one going. Look. One, two, three, four. All Cole Brown. They're pretty good. We saw Demas and Leno just uh, working together, cruising that last 50 once they had the points sewn up. So Cox takes that 412 22. Kasich. 423-34, Leno, 425-64, Demas, 425-70. Stein, 426-43. That's 28 points Co Brown just added to its total. Yeah, when's the last time that happened? Harriman, 427-41 of Lebanon. Wolf, 427-42. Norda 428.75. Eight guys under 430. 11 under 440. That's that's <laughs> incredible. 412 though. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> to think his last lap was the slowest lap. <laughs> Usually not that way. Yeah, he ran 61, 62, 63, 64. Pretty good, huh? OK, girls 400. Heat one, we got John Stark, Lebanon, Conval, Plymouth Regional, and Bo. Conval comes in with a 54-59. I mean, after you run a 412, then you go out and run a 3200. I don't care what anybody says. You, when you run that fast, you're not that tired after that. You can just go out and control the race and bang out a good one. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of pressure on you to run fast. That 412 equates to an 854 two mile. 3,200. about right. He's yep. run, what, 8.58 this year? Yep. Hey, hey, Chris. So yeah, someone on the corner over there on their third leg was swapped lanes with somebody else. But we are all set now, <laughs> and we're off. Let's see, Maybe a little difficult to see these handoffs, but not the cleanest as a as a whole. I think uh, Demas and Lena were thinking more about the 800 than they were the 1600. <laughs> they were just, hey, we're going to get our points and we're going to move on to our event. Yeah, I mean, when you go one through four, it doesn't really matter what order you come in, doesn't right? Matter. Well, Looks like Plymouth, close one, but Plymouth is going to take that one. 
54-60 for Plymouth. Lebanon, 54-78. John Stark, 55-21. Bow 55-22. And Conval 58-08. Heat two, we got Hanover, Pembroke, Oyster River, Kennett, Cole Brown, Milford, Hollis Brookline, Merrimack Valley. Top seed is Kennett with a 51-67. Co Brown comes in with 51-83. Oyster River 52-20. Milford 52-25. Lanes three, four, five, and six. Last year, winners was Co Brown 50-95. State record uh, is now 48-40 by Nashua. South. Division record is Oyster River. Correct. Pretty smooth. Looks like Milford got the baton first on the outside there. Ooh, not the cleanest handoff from them, though. They look to still be leading. At this point, here comes Cole Brown, storming wow. by. Chavda, Cole Brown. Oh, and Wheat puts Kennett in second. Wow. wow. So Cole Brown takes that 51-03. Kennett, 51-81 for second. Milford, 51-86 for third. Oyster River, 52-61. Hanover, 53-31. Pembroke, 53-82. Halls Brookline 54.95 and Merrimack Valley rounds it out 58.46. Wow, Kennett was way back in that, yeah. and uh, and we put him right back up into second. First heat of the boys, four by 100. We got Plymouth Regional, Merrimack Valley, Lebanon, Co Brown, Bo. St. Thomas Aquinas and Goffstown. 46-53 by Co Brown is the favorite in this heat. He'll be in lane four. Bo in lane five comes in with a 47-14. Lebanon lane three, 47-21. Couple updates from field events. Goffstown's Penelope Anna swinging the high jump at five feet. Boys Javelin also complete. Hanover's James uh, Chafoulis winning with 172 feet two inches. Wow. Good one. I think he came in as a 14 point, a uh, 14 foot favorite. It's pretty good. He uh, he got that by looks like about. 17 feet, Cale Russo of Kingswood in second, 155. Oh. A pretty good gap there. Pretty good margin. All right, here we go. Oh, 
Oh, someone's, ah, uh, there they go. Three shots. That's the maximum for duck hunting season. <laughs> the spring duck hunt. <laughs> oh, we'll find out what happened here. Goffstown had a commanding two. lead there. And two. Merrimack Valley charged with the false start. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, they jumped early. Yep, they are now removed. That was clean. Offs to the second leg. So Cole Brown. Wow. In Lebanon. Now we'll be that way. Cole Brown. So Cole Brown and Bo. Yep, Cole Brown and Bo. It looks oh, like that's Bo a great finish take by out. Cody McCraney. Holy cow. That's a big time by Bo, huh? Wow. 47-25 for uh, Bo. Cole Brown, 47-95. Goffstown, 48-34. I think we got a Bo, Bo fan here. Yep. Dan Artari. 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 How do you spell it? Say? Artori. Artori. That's, that's close. Yes. Uh, Lebanon, 48-34. 51, Plymouth Regional, 48-82. And what's the connection with Bo? You ran for Bo or? Yeah, yep. uh, Bo, uh, Bo alum, I uh, coached their middle school team. Oh, that's right. So I coached, coached Cody, he's a middle schooler. He's got some wheels. That, that was a, wow, that was a pretty significant gap for them over the, uh, significant gap for them. Okay, we got Kennett, lane one, Sao Egan two. Conville three, Oyster River four, Manchester West in five, Hollis Brookline in six, Hanover in seven, Milford in eight, 44 52 <coughs> comes in with a top time, Oyster River 44 76, Manchester West and Conville with a 44 81. Those guys are in le lanes three, four, and five. But as you know, anything can happen in any lane. Yeah, well, Oyster Rivers. They're down a man, missing, right? Uh, Doro. Yeah, so. Say that that would. Uh, I hope they have an alternate. Last year's champion, Milford, ran 43.96. Bedford has the Division II record from 2012 when they were part of Division II, 43.18. Congratulations to Bedford boys and girls last night. Big sweep. Also, Guilford boys and newfound girls officially crowned. Yes, finally, for the right? For the completion <laughs> of the pole vault. It's got to be a bummer when you win a title, but you can't really be there to celebrate it. The way, you know what I mean, with the right. same type of excitement. Well, I, I think both of those teams did have a couple competitors in the pole vault, so. Hanover's going to take this one wow. in a big way. Hanover followed by West. So Hanover lane seven. takes that 44-11. Manchester West, 44-46. Hollis Brookline, 44-76. Conval, 44-85. Sao Egan, 45-09. Last score on Team Milford, 45-97.
Kennett, 46.02. Oyster River, 46.08. So, yeah, Hanover coming in. They really put it to it. Girls 400. Last night was unbelievable. Yeah, come on in here. We were just talking about you, Ty. I'll keep mine on. So why don't you guys tell me your names, Moist River? Uh, Ty Doro. Ty Doro. And then uh, Brady Ash. Brady Ash, Sanborn. All right. Ty, what's going on? What happened? Uh, same groin injury from, from last Friday. Kind of made a business decision to just pull up, you know, more to the season than just states, as unfortunate as it is. But going to try to make MOCs as interesting as possible. Yeah, well, that's good. All right, so let me just read off this b before we start. We got Hoot of Goffstown, Brown of Lebanon, Merrick of Hanover, Bagnato of Hanover, Collins of Hanover, Bergen of Hollis Brookline, Salvatore St. Thomas Aquinas, and Crawford of Hollis Brookline. You got a stacked Hanover field right now. Yeah, Hanover's got the early early in the fine lanes there that you want. So Brady, you had a good uh, meet, Division Three. Yeah. Yeah. That was a fun meet. Yeah. Hundred was a little bit oh. yeah, Ooh, tough for don't you. Don't bring that up. But the I don't know if I would have well. wanted to be there. Yeah. yeah. Four hundred, I was just focused on getting the win, getting the job done, and then coming back for the two and four. This girl from Hanover is moving. I think it's flame four. You can come over here, you can see what we got on, on the screen. So that's one down through eight. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, she looks good. Just holding form, too. Yeah, and they have quite the lead. Yeah. So it's Bagnato. Yeah, let's see what time here. Hanover show, showing up pretty good tonight. 63. 63, pretty good. Yes, especially so, for the first And for the first heat. heat. Yeah. Yeah, so like a second improvement by her. So Bagnato takes that in 103-69. Collins of Hanover, 105-67. Bergen of Halls, Brookline, 106-09. Crawford of Hollis, Brookline, 107.04. Salvatore, St. Thomas, 69.20. Merrick, Hanover, 69.57. Hood, Goffstown, 69.68. Brown of Lebanon, 70.24. Heat two, we got Donito of Kingswood, Bouchard of Hollis, Brookline, Cantor of Lebanon, Lopashansky of Kennett, Maya Thomas of Goffstown. Opposer of Kingswood, Davis, Conval, O'Donnell of Hollis, Brookline. Lopashansky comes in as the favorite. I think she might be the defending champ. Yes, from last year. She could probably beat both you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she could definitely beat me right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, hot take. I think we see sub-60 here based on that last race. What did you think, think of Harriet Barber last night? I don't know what you're talking about. From Manchester Central. She ran a 56. A 56? Oh, she, broke, she broke the state record by the, the Division One record by two hundredths of a second. She she's an 11th grader. So she's all even right, fast. Right. Another year. Yeah, she's faster than Grace Devaney a, at the same age. We might oh see goodness. a New Balance Nationals All-American next year. She's going to pick up some big offers. So she won the 200. And 400 last night. Yeah, that's wow, such a hard good for double. her. That's a that's a tough double. Yeah, but so eating up the inside lane right now. Oh yeah, so yeah. We'll we're gonna we're gonna see sub 60. Lopashansky, she's tough. Yeah. Four and five battling it out. Five though, holding her ground. Actually, this is gonna be a good good finish. That would be Maya Thomas in lane five. Kicking it down. Oh, they're they're breaking 60 right now. They're breaking it. It's a good challenge. How about lane six? Who's going to hold off? Wow. Reposer in lane six. six. Upset hey, City right here. Got it right here. 59. That's, she's oh. got it, I think. 
That was close. That was close. That's Posa close. came in with a 63.02. Wow, very close. It wow. just ran 60.17. Dropped off almost PR. three and a half seconds. Bouchard of Halls oh, Brookline, 61.04. Lapashansky, 61.20. Danito, 62.22. Thomas of Goffstown, 62.55. Cantor of Lebanon, 62.58. Davis of Conval, 63.13. O'Donnell of Halls Brookline, 65.48. So now we're coming up on the boys. So you guys are the experts on this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look out for uh, lane three, my boy Keen Swiss. Keen Swiss, 54-36 comes in. So we got Miles Miller of Bo, Lerve of Pembroke, Swiss. How do you say it? Swiss? Swiss? S uh, Swiss. Swiss of Oyster River, Arsenault of Kingswood, Stevens of Kennett, Reposer of Kingswood, Fogg of Plymouth Regional, Dixon of Hanover. Arsenal comes in with a 53.04. But as we say, seat times don't mean anything. Yeah. It's when you show up. Yeah. Some have blocks, some don't have blocks. Usual mix up. I'll, I'll take the home track advantage. I'll rock with Ty here. Take lane three. But I don't know. Been a big upset night. So we'll see what happens. Anything can happen at States. This is very true. It's all about who shows up today. So what do you think? You think you'll be able to come back next week? Yeah, I've been in some PT leading up yeah. to today. So that's that was more just to evaluate if I was going to run today. But um, PT is going to be looking more, keeping me safer. Um, so would you be smarter to just, just go with the 400 where it's less, like, oh. really going at it? or I'm going to call out my guy Chris Stevens right now. I want the 100-meter uh, title. Um, it's going to be a fun race. I know Joshua Genchos is going to be there. Isaiah Reese, I love I love those guys. Great competition, um, but I kind of want the full slate. I'm missing out hurts me to You're not a be senior, out there right? right now. Yeah, I'm a senior. Oh, that's tough. I think they came through in 24, which puts them on pace for like 50, 51. So we'll see if they hold. Let's form see here. them get to the arms right here. Keen, Keen's ahead right Keen's now. Keen's holding. I like that. We'll see. Coming. Kingswood's forward, taking a nice lead right here. He's. It. Looks like Arsenal is going to take this. 52. Let's go. 52 mid. 52 mid. That's 52 pretty good out of the first heat. heat. We're see some big stuff. So Arsenal to Kingswood, 52-60. Swiss of Oyster River, 53-55. Reposer of Kingswood, 54-02. Stevens yeah, that's of Kennett, 54-18. Fogg of Plymouth Regional, 54-42. Dixon of Hanover, 55-22. Miller of Bow, 55-57. And Lurvia of Pembroke, 57-80. Heat two, we got Bruno of Hollis Brookline, Gleisher of Hanover, McLaughlin of Brookline, Ty Doro is standing to my left, Dapper <laughs> of Merrimack <laughs> Valley. He probably still could hop the fence and still place. Um, Kitchell of Hanover, Bradley of Hanover, and Sora of Milford. So Thapper comes in now with the 51-11 and yep. McLaughlin 51-17. Gleisher's no joke either. Yeah, yeah. We're uh, me and Brady are. Looking for Bichau to get a nice W here, but I was talking to Lucian a little bit when we were um, at the All-State little ceremony, and I, I'm i scared of him. Really? Everyone else should be. I think he's got some good legs in him. Yeah. We saw what we did in the indoor season. Don't be surprised if he wins this. Now, Lucian's tough, man. He's a good championship runner. I got I got Bichau. That's my guy right there. He's, he's going to go 50 point today. Yeah, 50 point. But not like 50.9, like 50.5. He's... He's running something special. And he's out today. hard. He's I like that really start. Hard. I'm going to go with Glacier. He's out hard. He I'll always take my guy in the blocks out of someone not in blocks. Boy, Glacier at New England's indoors was – Yeah. he really turned it that's, on at the right yeah, time. That's what's making me think he's going to make a good time here. He's looking good he on this back really stretch good. in the inside lane. And he's got the and he's got the uh, 800 after this as well. Like I respect that. And plus, he can see those other lanes. That's that's the and biggest Bichel's advantage got too. The outside lanes still, but we got a few guys coming in. We got some. It's, it's going to be tight at the end. It's going to be interesting. Let's let's see this. They're through quick. Looks like Glacier. And they're fighting with the arms. Lucian's yeah. fighting. Let's go, Bichel. Wow. Bichel looks smooth, but they're and they're running out of energy at the line. Looks like oh, Lucian's got it. He's got it. He got it. Taken after Pierce. Wow. Five. Who won it? Oh. That's got to be Lucian. Yeah, Glacier Glacier. takes that. 51 22. McLaughlin, Halls, Brookline, 51 26. Wow, Thapper, Merrimack Valley, 51 51. Bradley of Hanover, 52 86. Bruno 
Halls Brookline 53-68, Soar of Milford 53-85, and Kitchell of Hanover. That's the best. You love to see yeah, the dive. Awesome way to go out. Well, I, thought, I respect that. I thought that. Gleisher was like falling off right there, but he got a second win. Got it. That's the, the 800 legs. strength right there. That's yeah. what. That's why I thought he could take this W right here. He's tall too. I mean, he's all legs. Those strides carry him. So what are you going to go with that mid media champions? Just 400? Uh, no, I'm going to go 400. I'm going to do the 4-2 double, four and two. then I'll go 4-by-4. Uh, four four. The 4-2 four doubles are better because your, be your best event is the 400. Yeah, yeah and as then long you as get you don't 200. throw up after the 4. Yeah, you got the <laughs> gravy. Uh, I'll see you at the barrel, buddy. <laughs> it's like our home. Like, we just live there after races now. So oh, we got three hurdles now. I know nothing about three hurdles. Should be a good event, I think. Cola three. Hearn is the is the favorite for this. Three hurdles is a sick event, though. This girl from Nashua North, Janelle Thomas. Oh, she's yeah. only run it a, a few times, and she's almost on the state record right now. And yeah, she's only a sophomore. I've been I I watched her race last night. She looked really good. Yeah, she's a good relay finisher too. Yeah, the boy the boys three hundred hurdles though is going to be good. The job. Um, well, for D1s was great last night because you had um, Chong and then you have uh, Rory Olsen. And then there was another kid who was right in there. Uh, Olsen and Chong are the real deal. Those, yeah, guys, those, are, those guys are fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Chris Chong, probably my favorite, favorite runner to watch. That's not myself. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That hurt. <laughs> hey, what can you say? Hurdling is, is kind of mesmerizing. Yeah. He's a good open runner, too. I raced against him at Harvard earlier in the indoor season. Oh, for real? Is he pretty good in the 400? Yeah, he was real good. What did he run? I think he, I think it was around a 52, maybe even a 51 That's indoors, solid. which is which is pretty serious stuff. So have you broken 50 yet? This season, I I haven't. I, have you? Not not this season. But, but have you guys in the past? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We ran, we ran together in the summer a lot. Yeah. With Sean, shout out Sean Clegg. Yeah. Sean Clegg and Jake Haley. Haley's. Uh, Haley had a good run yesterday, too. He did. Yeah, I was surprised he went for the four over the eight. He's nasty at the eight. He was running like 156 a, last summer. Yeah, I, he would have probably won that mm -hmm. if he did the eight last. I mean, Redmond didn't do it, so. Yeah. Or, or did Sean run the 800? Sean I don't think did he did run the eight. Yeah. I'm surprised. I mean, it makes sense because Sean's going to defend the 400 yeah. title, but he ran 122, 121, the six. And winter. a 154 <laughs> at BU. Yeah, I was just saying he ran a 154. So in this first heat of 300, we got Thorne of Cobrown, Manning of Cobrown, Engel of Bro uh, Halls Brookline, Ballard of Lebanon, Perrin of Cobrown, Ross of Cobrown, Corbett of John Stark, Bellevue of John Stark. Have either one of you guys ever tried the 300 hurdles? I did my sophomore year. You did? No, yeah. I've, I've never tried the 300 hurdles. It wasn't, it wasn't a pretty sight. I'm going say that. I'd say hardest event in track. Yeah. This 400 hurdles. Yeah, 400 hurdles is terrible. Yeah, on, honestly, this doesn't even matter too much about speed. It's about who just maintains form to the last 100 on the hurdles. Just getting over them is not easy. Yeah, we're seeing a pretty tight crowd right now. Yeah, this is exciting. Get up the stagger. Girl in eight, though. There appears to be eight. Yeah. Where are you guys oh, going seven. to school next year? Uh, I'm going to uh, St. Anselm. Okay. And uh, I'm going to Connecticut College. Oh, good. Good. Middle lane. Stumble. Oh, we got a race now. And we're going to get a we battle. Race now. Might see another dive. Three. But it uh, seems to be Hollis Engel. taking HB. this. Nice. 51s. So Solid. Eng Engel of Hollis Brookline, 51 24. Perrin of Cole Brown, 52 05. Manning of Cole Brown. 5367. Tell you what, everything has been like a race today. Corbett, John Stark, 5393. Bellevue, 5412. Ross, Cole Brown, 5505. And Thorne, Cole Brown, 5512. Battle of Lebanon did not start. We got Matter of Hanover, Blue of Hollis Brookline, Wall of Pembroke, Cardi of Oyster River, Dow of Hollis Brookline, McPhee of Kingswood, Moser of Merrimack Valley, and Simpson of Hanover. 
Cardi's a big favorite coming yeah. to this, right? I think a three-second favorite, but uh, I know her plan was to kind of go easy because she's got a big slate today, but don't be surprised if there's a pretty crazy time that gets thrown down right now. That's always when it happens, too, when you She's the defending champion. Yeah. Staying relaxed and not just... And she's already eating out. up this this back stretch. Oh, yeah. yeah she's, she's good. Out. I mean, just look at her go. Wow. She's already in the lead. Like, even ahead of eight, 100 meters in. She looked, she's a Taking great the turn. hurdler. Yeah. Wow. Hurdle, hurdling is like an art. That's the best thing. When you get a really good hurdler, just glide right over. Wow. Yeah, and she's had she's a sizable lead. She, she might PR. Yeah, there's no doubt about this one. I think we're going to see a PR. Get through over. Taking it pretty easy, but of course, yeah, she's 300 closing. hurdles, hard event. She's closing up now. She's going to PR. And that's a sub 40. Wow, nice. Wow. That's big time right there. You called it. Hey, watch out for her in the 200 coming up, too. Yeah, she did good. Yeah, I believe she's the top seed with the only one under 26, but I could be wrong. Wow. Coach is loving that. Yeah, and there's the excitement. <laughs> Here. Are those puke buckets in the inside of the field? <laughs> they might be. So Cardi takes that 44 84. Wall, Pembroke 48 40. Dow 48 92. Of Hollis Brookline. McPhee 49 10. Kingswood. Baloo 49 75. Hollis Brookline. Moser of Merrimack Valley 50 98. Simpson of Hanover 51 33. Mary Matter of Hanover 51 36. Wow. Yeah, that was a, that that was a was fast seat. Really good. Was that a meet record for 44 8? No? Uh, no. <laughs> what is the meet record? Meet record 44 5. Hold on a second. Ty, how, what, what grade is she in? Uh, she's a junior this year. Junior? Mm -hmm. Look out for that next year then. Cause she was cruising and she didn't even look like she was trying. Especially that last hundred. <laughs> Made it look so effortless. 44 5 6 at Corinne Kennedy, who's also the state Ooh. record holder. This kid, like 4 or 5, he's out. We got Huang of Hanover, Fogg of Plymouth Regional, Bassett of Oyster River, Giordani of Oyster River, McCluskey of Kennett, Pazinski of Sauhegan, Savesco of Milford, and McCammick of Halls Brookline. Let's see how this outside land holds up. Yeah, he's out. And I think that's your guy coming through too. Giordani comes in the top seed at Oyster River. Yeah, and he looks strong. Yeah, where did that outside? Oh. Game? Mall's that second to last hurdle. Ooh, we got a race though. We got a race. Gets over it clean and gets the lead. Close one, but he takes it. Giordani. And her outside lane made it a race. In the gym shorts too. Gotta love it. <laughs> Alright, we'll get this we'll get this last race and then we'll pass off okay. the mics. The eight hundreds after this, right? Yeah, yep. 800. Is Race of the day, I think. 800. Yep. Could Demas be. Demas took that 16 real easy. <laughs> he was looking mm -hmm. back too, mm -hmm. making sure nobody's gonna pass him. They 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 went one, two, three, four though. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure that uh, Jamie's gonna want to make a push against his teammate. Greg. I'm sure yeah. that Leischer or Lucian Gleischer is gonna wanna yeah, keep the adrenaline going for the double win. And then of course my guy Chris Jernigan's going into this fresh. I'm gonna have to take him when the time comes. Okay, we got. And they're off. Come on. Can't even. Ooh. Wow, yeah, Dude. he is moving. Yeah. That one kid is way out. He is hauling. He's got like a 10 meter gap right now. We got McCammick, lane one, Lamontane, lane two, Henderson, three, Powell, Hanover, four, Wallace, Merrimack Valley. Five, Holodowski, Milford, Lee, Cole Brown, and Post. So looks like Powell. And let's go, Powell. Yeah. Powell. Sub 40? Sub 40? Nah. Close though. 4107. That's solid. That is solid. That's no joke right there. 
Shout out to another competitor, Tyler Wallace, on being on the All-State this year. <laughs> the point. Uh, yeah. so that was a good race. Oh, we got the we got the merch. Here we go. Track and field. Cox, when's my Hoka Athlete of the Week shirt gonna come in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want it. Right. Do you have it right now? All right, I'll hand this off. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, off. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay, we got the 800. We got two heats of it. We got Who of Bo, Spack of Merrimack Valley, Bergeron of Cole Brown, Bernard of John Stark, Innes, Plymouth Regional, Hood of Goffstown, Spear, Halls Brookline, Maledic of Lebanon. Bernard comes in with a, actually, Who comes in with the best time, 238.81 in this heat. Only a freshman. And she was in the 4x8. Uh, Actually, a lot of freshmen in this uh, heat. Wow, mostly freshmen. Pretty tight still through the first lap. Coming through at about 118. We had Hu and Spack leading the way. Along with Bergeron. So who's only a freshman? Yep, uh, well there's a lot of freshmen in this heat. Spack is only a freshman. Uh, John Starks. Barnard is a freshman. Goffstown's Hood. Spear, yeah, a lot of, mostly freshmen in that heat. Hmm. Kind of surprising, usually the 800 is a pretty tough event for uh, freshmen. It'll be a good finish. There's looks like there's four, five on the corner, pretty tight. Looks like Goffstown, Merrimack Valley, and Cole Brown. Go, Ryan, go. Spack is going to take this one. Two thirty-seven, fifty-seven. Like the top four, maybe in that heat, all with season best times. Heat two, we got. Uh, Haley Kavanaugh, Oyster River, coming in as a top seed with a 219.92. Sheet of Goffstown, Abrams of Kennett, Hannah of Lebanon, Anderson, Hanover, Sutherland of Plymouth Regional, Burris of St. Thomas Aquinas, and Kimball of Merrimack Valley. Kavanaugh's only got, already got one win tonight. In the mile. The 1600. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, you think she's got, got some wheels left or what? Uh, it looked like it was a fairly quick, fairly quick uh, 16 earlier. I think she'll be okay. Did, did, did she to run at all? Has she run yet? Do we know? She looks, looks like pretty most strong. of the other girls in this, uh, unless they were doing the 4 by 8 or at least fresh from not doing the 16. Tashita looks like a good runner, though. Another field event in. She's Ashaya done. Louder. Tashita Louder of West. Long jump. Long jump. Winning the long jump. Gavinoff's got about uh, Let's go, Haley. 10 meters right now, I'd say. Lead came through in 70. Followed by Tashida. So her official time was 67.59 coming through. So that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good split. Sheeta came through in 69.40. Abrams of Kennett, 73.18. Anderson, 73.12. So she's she's, got, she still looks really strong. Yeah, she's got this one in the bag. Sheeta also pretty far ahead of the rest of the group. She's working the arms really good. This is going to wow, be a good one. It's going to be a really good time, yeah. Serious time right there. there go. 217. 1748. That's quite a double. Dashita puts a good one up, too. 217.49 for Kavanaugh, 224 for Tashita. Abrams, 229.27. Anderson of Hanover, 230.69. Burr St. Thomas 234.17. Hannah of Lebanon 236.17. Sutherland Plymouth Regional 240.95. Kimball Merrimack Valley 246.78. Eight hundred, heat one. We got Robinson of Co Brown, Cody of Gostown, Ernestus of Lebanon, Jones Lebanon, Lemire, John Stark, Betterly, Bo, Hirsch, Gostown, and Finnegan Hollis Brookline. Robinson right to the front. Oh no! Wait, who is that up front? I think that'd be Eli Lemire. Of John Stark. He's pretty good. He had a good cross country season. Couldn't see him behind him. Yeah, he's a smaller smaller guy, but he's definitely a tough runner. Lemire comes in with a 20409. Jones comes in with a 20349. Someone's making a move on the outside. Can't tell who that is. Lebanon, maybe. Making a move to the front. I think that's Hanover. Hanover? Is there Hanover? I didn't think there was a Hanover in there. Oh. Mind that. Should be Logan Cody. Goffstown, I believe. They've got two Lebanon guys up front. Oh, Yunerzis and Jones. Jones is the guy that finished it off with a four by eight. So we'll see if Ben Ben Robinson uh Figures out how to race him right now. <laughs> Probably wants a little bit of uh, revenge. If he plays it right, I think he could do that. Uh, there's Lemire going back to the front. Yeah, that was a good surge in the back stretch from him. Get position into the turn. 
Hey, he's starting to open it up a little bit. Yeah, that was a nice move. Wow, he's holding him off. Eli Lemire with a big one. Big timer right oh, there. All the better nice. Lee Bo with a nice finish. So Lemire of John Stark takes that 203.52. Betterly of Bo, 204.19. Robinson Co Brown. 204.54, Jones 11 and 204.79, Hirsch Goffs down 204.93, Unesis of Lebanon 205.13, Cody of Goffs down 205.52, Finnegan 209.08. Heat two we got Gavin Demas, Mr. 152.65, Jernigan of Oyster River, fresh 156.98, Lucian Gleiser just off his big 400 win, 157.05. Cheney Leno, probably the underdog, the sneaky guy. He could probably pull this one off. 157.60. Sean Miller of Lebanon, 159.61. Chase Hall of Goffstown, 2 flat 12. Berger, Hollis Brookline, 2, two, two flat 29. And Daniel Narda, 201. So who are you picking here? I'm taking my guy, Chris. You are. Fresh, huh? And, uh, it's, Gavin, a good set, it's a good yeah. setup for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gavin's employing a strategy that I kind of predicted. Yeah. He's a big send kick guy. I'd say Gavin at and State's like a move. Clay Thompson in game six. So, Oh, big, big move from him and Jamie. If you give him that inside lane, you got to take that inside lane. Yeah, every time you got to take the inside lane as soon as if you I'm get Jamie it. If I'm Jamie Lano, I'm, sit I'm sitting back and just uh, yeah, I'm watching. very surprised to see um, my teammate Chris taking the lead here. I don't but yeah. he, he's, he, def he does have some speed, so this should make things more interesting. Let's see what they come through 400 in. Whenever, Gavin looks whenever, real comfortable. Yeah, whenever real Demis comfortable. is sitting on the shoulder, I would say Chris looks pretty scary. good as well. They, I mean, they all, they all look good. Yeah. Don't and be they surprised. They take it through in a 57 high. Jamie, 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 Gavin's already eyeing yeah. that curve. Yeah. He's eyeing the outside he, shoulder turn again. I think he'll take it at 250. It looks like he is. I think Lano. Can, either, if Lano, Lano, make, if Lano, Lano makes Lano, the move, I'm telling you. Lano looked. Uh, he looked sharp on that curve. I think he's. Uh, I think he's uh, devising a plan right now, but. Yeah, there goes Gavin. Gavin at 250. Mm. There it is. Daniel Norder but staying don't, yeah, right in there. I was going to say, don't count out the person in fourth right now. That's Daniel Norder. Yeah. 125. If I was Demas, though, I'd make Chris I'd, is holding on. He is. Jernigan's holding on. Yeah. We're going to have a good race this last 100. Don't count out Jamie. Yep. Gav's kicking, though. He's digging. He hears and those footsteps. And they're at 140. Ups. And Gavin's putting the Gavin's yeah, got yeah. plenty left. I knew we now. knew that He's was going to happen. He's got plenty of gas. Chris yeah. is this is another big time him. run. This is going to be holy moly. At least a 154. Then 54. And there we 54 go, Chris Jernigan. He should uh, warrant some good results here. Uh, Gavin taking a victory lap after. <laughs> Actually, it looks like he's just getting back going. to the tent. He's get got back plenty. To the tent. He's, get, All right. he's, he's got more in the tank. Demas right. takes that 154.37. Jernigan, Oyster River, 155.98. Lano, 157.67. Berger, Hollis Brookline, 2 flat 37. Miller, 201.43. Norder, 201.57. Hall, 209.17. Glacier, Hanover, 209.27. I'd say that 400 took a lot out of Glacier, so he may have learned yeah. a lesson yeah. there. Uh, I was wondering what his coach was thinking, or what Lucian might have been thinking. Yeah, that's a tough that, one. But, tough hey, you one. can only learn from it. I respect that. Yeah. That All was right. a great race, though. Right. We're hopping off. All right. <laughs> Dean, Demas, when he's, when he's on, he's on. When he's off, he's in another world. <laughs> That was a great race, yeah. huh? He's always going to have some post-finish oh, performance yeah. Yeah. there. That's good. That's good. Congratulations. Another another good time. Validates the 152. Yeah, that was a pretty good time. You know, you run a 154 after you run a decent decent uh, 1600. There's nothing wrong with that. 200. We got... Uh, hold on. Let's say one more thing here about that 800. Wait a minute. By the way, that was his new state Division II record. 
Oh, wow. What was the previous? 155.43 by Gubby Narana. That's probably one of the coolest names I've ever heard, Gubby Narana. But uh, that, Gavin Demas just took that down. Nice. Wow. By more than a second. Mm -hmm. So congratulations on your state record, Division II state record. A couple of those today. Girls 200. We got uh, two heats. We get Annis of Goffstown, U of Oyster River, Collins of Hanover, Prussia, Cole Brown, Davis, Convell, Harvder, Hav I don't know about that one. Harvder of Hanover, Kanushik of Oyster River, and Arthur of Hollis Brookline. They're all jumbled in here as 28s. 28s across the board. Anybody's game. It's going to be you. It looks like you, not me. You takes that. 27.98, so she's the first one into the 27s out of that group. Kanushik of Oyster River, 28.32. Harvder, Hanover, 28.60. Collins, Hanover, 28.65. Pressure of Cole Brown, 28.68. Davis Conval, 28.90. Arthur Hulls, Brookline, 28.91. Annis of Goffstown, 28.93. Heat two, we've got Cantor, Lebanon, Thomas, Goffstown, Chavda of Cole Brown, K Cardi of Oyster River, Wheat of Kennett, Giordano, Milford, Amiot, Pembroke, Bronson, St. Thomas Aquinas. So I'd say uh, Cardi, Wheat, and Chavda. It's going to be the battle between those ones. Maybe a little Char Giordano mixed in. But they've all run some races today. So say a lot of familiar names in that in this heat. Erin Cardi just smoked that 300, though. So she's got to be on cloud nine right now. Let's see what she's got in the tank. But Wheat is out there. Yeah, this would be three in a row for her. Yeah, it looks like Wheat's going to take this one pretty handily. Not even, not even challenged. Wheat's ripping this one. That's big time right there. Wheat 25-23. You kidding me? Chavda, Cole Brown, 2609. Cardi, Oyster River, 2629. Giordano, Milford, 2719. Bronson, St. Thomas, 2760. Thomas, Goffstown, 2804. Cantor, Lebanon, 2876. Amiot, 2885. In that. That'll. Uh Wheat besting her winning time last year. Last year, 25-62 to take the crown. 25-23 this year. That's actually a very tough Division II record. 24-75 by Bianca Williams. That's one of the best ones ever. Behind yeah, so Kathy Lawson's 24-44. That's back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back for yeah, for Wheat. Yeah. Only back-to-back -back in the 100. Pretty good because she DQ'd. And I remembered it. <laughs> Boys 200, we got Peters of Cole Brown, v Vito of Hanover, Gallon of West, Valencia of West, Keene of Plymouth Regional, Bruno of Hollis Brookline, Katzel of Sao Egan, Lerve of Pembroke, 2374, Valencia 2375, and a 2379, Gallant and Keene. Again, most of these races, a lot of these races, I don't want to say most, but a lot of these races are not going to seed dimes. Wilson's going to be close. Whoa, oh, that was close. Wow. Looks like uh, Valencia's going to take that one. Oh, Keen of Plymouth? Keen, yeah. Wow. That was close. Look how close that was. Keen of Plymouth, 2346. Bruno Hollis Brookline, 2348. Valencia, 2349. Vidu. Hanover, 2382. Peters, Cole Brown, 2401. Gallant, Manchester, 2402. Katzel, 2405. Sao Egan, Lerve, Pembroke, 2537. That was real close. Heat two, we got Edwards of Conval, Ben of Sao Egan, Corvo of Cole Brown. Dora will not be in this one. Willette, Oyster River, Montgomery, John Stark, Martin of Hanover, McCraney of Bow. Favorite now will be 
Willette and Corvo, they both come in with a 23-14. Montgomery of John Stark comes in with a 23-15. I think uh, Willette won the, will let win the 100 earlier today? The 100, let's see. Go ahead. He did something earlier. He did? Yep. Sorry, because I remember him and Edwards with a, sharing a nice moment after going neck and neck in that one. Looks like lane five, and that would be Willette. Double win at chicken dinner. Talon Willette, cool name right there, Talon. Love that. Talon Willette, 22.83. Corvo of Cole Brown, 23.16. Montgomery of John Stark, 23.30. Martin of Hanover, 23.54. Ben of Sow Egan, 23.69. McCraney of Bow, 24.10. Is he, he's having a good day. I'd say so. Girls 3,200. Mackenzie Cook, Sheldon Fisher, Leah Perard, Addison England, Maya Bruscio, Megan Ferris of Hanover, Hastings of Lebanon, Hardy of Hollis Brookline, Larson of Cobrown, Brown, Bauer of Hollis Brookline, Gorham of Kennett, Boyer of Plymouth Regional, Davis of Hanover, Eggleton of Hanover, Duchesne of Pembroke, Duchesne of Pembroke. A lot of runners that we've seen earlier. Kenzie Cook got second in the mile, 1600. So she's looking to. Fisher, Perriard, Brochu, and I believe England also running in that race earlier. Perard's got the coolest glasses award for today. Hey. All right, looks like we have the girls 3200 starting on. All right, sweet. So it looks like in here we got Cook, Fisher, oh. Cook, Fisher, Perraird, England, Roach, Ferris, Hastings, Larson, Gorham, Boyers, Davis, Eagleton, Dutch, Dutchinson's. Trying to get all the numbers straightened out for the 3200. Two athletes wearing the same number. That's not good. Could uh, could mess things up. Make a little bit of uh, confusion for the timer services. Yeah. So a lot of these girls are doubling back from other events, which is very common in championship level meets. But for the two mile longest race of the day, it could be definitely be hard to come back at full full throttle. So. Yeah. So while we're waiting for them to. Got all set up. Another winner in the field events, Rio Calle, with John Stark winning the boys' long jump, 21 feet 3 inches. Nice. And a quick team scoring update: 12 events of the 18 scored, boys and girls. Co Brown with the lead, in the boys 79, Hanover with 64, Oyster River in third with 33, and then girls, tight one. Cole Brown in first is 65, Oyster River 63, Kennett 40. Looks like they're about to begin. And they're off. 65 points to 63 could very well change in this event. We got two of the highest ranked uh, athletes of the field from Oyster River and at Cole Brown, so. It should be interesting. I'm curious to see how Sheldon's gonna do after that last mile, because she seemed like she was starting to die down a little bit. Uh, but she's a tough girl, so I think she'll definitely be able to snag at least top five, top six. I think the entire top five was uh, was in the 16. Yep. 16 so it's, today. It's, a, it's a really uh, not fresh meat, uh, meat if you will. It's, they're all doubling back, which it's, at this point, it's whoever has the most uh, drive to win. 
Yeah, so if Cook, who won, uh, was second in the 16, right, um, if she comes away with this, which she is seated to, and Fisher comes in at second, then that would bring us to a tie in yeah, the team Cook race. Was, Cook was second in the, was second in the 16. Kavanaugh was a 509. Cook, the 510. The photo finish with uh, Leah Berryard of Hanover. That was a good race to watch, literally at the line. So it looks like Cook's going to take, take it right out. from the gun, yeah. which seems to be her style of running, so yeah, no surprises there. We got Sheldon and the rest kind of right behind her. She has a little bit of a lead, she's really taking it, but nothing too scary yet. The fun thing about the 3200 is that you can kind of let them have a little bit of that leeway in that first couple of laps because the, the main laps that matter aren't the first couple it's the last half of it right so they opened up on an 83 for cook 84 for the uh chase pack so, uh, so they're not they're not sitting yeah, they're, not. they're going for it yeah, they're definitely to giving an extent, it so yeah they're definitely giving it some effort especially after that mile they did um looks like um is it cook in first right yep cook's making a little bit more of a lead and sheldon's right behind her ish uh, looks about like 10 meters, 15. So nothing too crazy yet, but that lead will probably expand outwards a little bit as this uh, meet card starts to go. A lot of this race is going to be determined by prep work. So who did the best job of staying warm in between races? Who did the just uh, best job of refueling? Things like that. So simple stuff that make it so that you can run at the highest level. Yeah. Because personally, I wouldn't recommend not getting a quick bite to eat, quick get some carbs in there. Yeah, get some so. Get some snacks. So we still have Cook out in front. Looks doing smooth. Her Doesn't look like she's in pain right now, which is a good sign. So coming through in 249, 251 for Fisher. Uh, so still there. let's see, that's... Five fifty or no five. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the math too. Yeah, I, I'm struggling. That's not good. It's not good. But yeah, but th right now they're looking smooth. Looks like uh, about the same distance apart. That that gap is not really a gap at this point. It's very easily able to be uh, caught up. So they're on eleven sixteen pace 11, for Cook, 16. and then few seconds back for the chase pack chase pack yeah so the chase pack looks like they're all like in that right range of just trying to battle it out with each other and cook's just trying to do her thing trying to snag that first place which she's seated for yeah um, but i wouldn't say it's over obviously, oh, obviously. i mean it's, it's it's long long before over yeah we're going on the third or this is going to be the completion of the third lap you got five or yep five more eight uh left so it's not truly over until that last like lap, unless it's. And unless even some, then, I mean. Even then, you someone never know. can someone can pull up a really fast ending kick. I do admire that Cook is going for it and trying to keep some space up front. Yeah, it's very admirable that even though she knows she's she could easily just stay with that for front yeah. back and kind of just coast in, but she's giving it her all and trying to ha put up a good time, which good on her. So her lead only grew a little bit over half a second that lap so so they're still right on that pit whereas uh, her pace. yeah her second lap was a, almost a full two seconds faster than the chase pack and now the, the chase pack is kind of latched onto a similar pace yeah so we'll see if they start to try and bring her back in i'm curious to see if cook because right now she looks smooth she doesn't look like she's she looks like she's trying but she doesn't look like she's like exerting herself i'm curious to see if she'll have like a last half of the race start to pick it up a little bit and try to go for a faster time because right now she looks pretty smooth. Wondering if anyone from that chase pack is going to make a move to try to join, or if they're going to they're going to sit back as long as they can. Yeah. But Sheldon, right now, she needs that second place for her team because right now it, they're very close. Especially if um, Cook gets that first place, because I believe they're either slightly behind or just about the same right now. Is that correct? Yeah, Cobra Brown is up by two as so. of when I last did so. 12 events. So, yeah, so if she gets second pl place, she'll get eight points, and if she gets first, that's ten, that's that gap right immediately. They're tied. 
So. So. Brochu and yep. Fisher leading that chase pack. Cook may be opening up a little bit of a lead. If yeah. you're in that chase pack, I wouldn't give her too much more. Yeah. Wouldn't give her too much more room. That gap is slowly opening. Put it. Put another two seconds on the chase pack. On yep. that one. Yeah. So if she's I'm starting to move a little bit, that or the the chase pack starting to feel the feel the heat, starting to feel a little bit more tired. Um, but Sheldon knows she needs to nab that second place to kind of keep her got her team in the running. Because that chase pack, anyone could get that second place. Yep. That, that's as simple as just one person puts a move or one person just outkicks harder than the other. Definitely some jockeying for, uh, for position heading into the curve in that chase group. So a yep. little bit of a sense of urgency. Looks like Brochu trying to make a move on the outside maybe. Yeah, it looked like she kind of came up on her shoulder but uh, decided to tuck in for the corner. Um, if I was in that chase pack and I wanted to have a shot at catching Mackenzie Cook, I would probably try and share the lead. I know that's a lot easier said than done, but if you share the workload, Makes it could a be a lot easier because well, Cook's Cook, up there running yeah. by herself. Well, so. well now she's got and now she's got other Lapped runners traffic. to targets to go for, so Yeah, which yep. gives you a confidence booster uh, yeah. from experience. I always found when I'm passing someone, it's much easier on my mind because I'm like, oh, I'm getting fast. I'm just going to try to nab that person, nab that next person really can improve. It looks like Sheldon's going on trying to put a little bit more of a lead. It looks like she's starting yep. to go a little bit. Perriard was in fourth, trying to make a move going yeah. around the corner. So <laughs> Cook has very uh, marginally, but she has negative split the last three laps. Wow, so. that's impressive. But it looks like they're still in the running. It's getting to that point where it's about to be just a Cook uh, win. But we will see because I believe got a couple more laps in them. Um, I'm still curious of what uh, who's going to get second. Uh, I do think that if for second place, if they're going to want to get that second place, they need to make a move in that last two laps, and they need to make it on that straight away because it's a lot harder to pass someone on that turn. Especially when it comes to that last mile, or, or last, not last mile, yeah, last we've lap. Seen, we've seen all three of them go for it at different points and try to push the pace. They're all they're all being stubborn. They want that second place. They want those points. But it looks like they spread out a bit, trying to see them through all the others. Well, it looks like Fisher's pulled ahead a little bit. She's... Yep. She's definitely put All right, on. So Fisher and, and Perriard starting to put some distance on Brochu. Yeah, Brochu's got some targets to go for. Yep. Those two are definitely in the battle for second there. Uh, oh, looks like she's starting to try to make a move. It looks like she's picking it up a little bit. So we got two packs of two now. With uh, Fisher and Perriard and then uh, Brochu and England. Yes. And then Cook up front. So that's. F yep, looks like Sheldon's trying that's to pick up. That's only uh, five spots. So who's our sixth? Last score. Oof, I lost track of that a while ago. Yeah, it's yeah. because it's all the people are just right neck and neck. It's right. So it's looking like Megan Ferris of Hanover is in six. She's. 13 seconds back. So. 13 seconds. So you're in the top five. It's your race to lose for uh, at least scoring. Yes. And even her, Megan Ferris, she's got a 15 second gap on uh, seventh. So, so there's the scores have more or less been decided at this point. It's just who gets what amount. Exactly. Cook looks like she's still really good. She looks calm. She looks smooth. But the battle for second is looking more interesting. Um, looks like she's they right on that shoulder. Looks of, uh, like uh, they might have closed a little bit. Yeah. Although it is the bell lap, might be too late here. Yeah. So let's see. So that was that was an 86.6 for Cook. So we'll see, but and an 85.7. So I don't think just a second. But I don't think they're going to catch Cook. But that second place that can go to anyone at this point. Yep. Yeah, so. Fisher's uh, definitely picking it up. up. Perry Arden and Chase. Though. coming around in fourth. Yep. It's, uh, it's close. I think Sheldon's starting to make a bit of a move, though. It's starting to make some distance. Which she she needs. really needs the second if she wants yeah. to, for the 
for the team race. But it looks like she, oh. Oh, it's getting Boy, close. it is a battle out it's, there. Oh, that's close. Sheldon needs to be ahead of her at that turn to have a better shot of winning because passing someone on the turn costs way more energy than passing someone on the straightaway. So if she wants that second place, she needs to go now. But it looks like Cook is about to hit the straightaway. Looking at straightaway at 11.06 about. She's starting to move. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. Oh boy! Both of them are Both going. Both of them are going. It looks like uh, Sheldon's gonna get third. So wow, what a kick. Cook, Cook, Perryard, and then Fisher. Sh Fisher. Not bad for. Was there? Were Those some are some doubles or triples? I think it was just doubles, right? Uh, definitely doubles. I don't have I all the, the yeah. four by eight. I think Fisher did not Perriard do the four by eight. may have done the four by eight. Yeah. Which that's a that's a good day. So Cook eleven twenty, Fiard eleven twenty four, Fisher eleven twenty six or twenty five. So England was fourth, and Brochu was fifth. Yep. Eleven forty one for. Uh, and then and Megan then Ferris took up the last scoring position. Scoring position at eleven fifty five. So good race by Cook. Uh, she got first, which is a good. Good thing for her team. Fisher getting that third place is going to cost them a little bit, and they're now in a net of two. I think some other events might have been scored by then. So we can try to refresh, see what it looks like. Uh, looks like another another event did come in. I'm trying to see what it would have been, what it would have been for the girls. One to go. Cobra on boys pick up some big points in the pole vault, it looks like. Looks like Zachary Blades winning that with 12 feet. First Conval, Jack Harris, 11-6. Finn Hill of Cobra and Noah Lamontane of Lebanon tied for third at 11 feet. Uh, girl, sh uh, girl shot put. Yep, girl shot put was a, a newly scored event. Milford's Kylie Allen winning that in 35-7. The Co Brown going four five six. That's some so points some right there. Points. That's six, right? Yeah, uh, seven seven points being added to the total. So yeah. we'll see how it what happens at the end of the thirty two. Still have some competitors coming through in that. But if you know by any state meet, it's not over until the, all those events are gone. You can say you put uh, thirty points or whatever in uh, one event, which wouldn't happen. Uh, but put X amount of points in one event. Those field events, we don't really know because it takes a while for those things to kind of. We saw with and we saw with Division Three when it was uh, pole vault was postponed today. Oh yeah, that Both definitely. Both team results came down to that final event. Final event, yeah. All that, the top teams had competitors in that. That must have been like such a, sh like such a suspense, just waiting for that, like <laughs> waiting for that last event. You're already soaking wet from the. Uh, race that they had and they're all tired and they're just like, all right, uh, go in and do that pole vault and those last couple field events. Yeah, and the weight a day also definitely changed the dynamics at the end of the meet. Yeah. But I have to say, other than the one, uh, the the championship two years ago that was in the freezing rain, it's probably the coldest I've ever been for a 3200 at a state meet. Are you talking about yeah. the 2021? Yep, yep. I, I raced was, uh, in that one. Yep, that was uh, that was a that was a day, especially with um them being uh, guys and girls separate. Yep, that was a especially with those people who were tripling. Like I tripled. That was a very hard day, especially because you didn't have all the break of the the women's events. So so right now it's 54. It's dark. I mean, if I was in this race, I would be very happy for the weather. Definitely the best weather out of the three divisional right. meets. So. Yeah. Boys 32 coming onto the track. Aiden Cox, Co Brown in the top position. 858. Rahan Harriman, Thomas Wolf of Lebanon, 2 3. Tyler Kazik, Nikhil Chavda of Co Brown up there. And Owen Stein of Sauhegan, Daniel Sixon of Milford, Samard of Conval, Hagen of Oyster River, Irvine of Sauhegan, Ferris, Valentino, Parker, all of Hanover. Gagnon of Goffstown, Engert of Lebanon, and Heyman of Plymouth. 
your 16 runners in this event. I'm curious to see how uh, a couple of these guys are doing, because a couple of these guys, I think this is their second or third event, just like the girls. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the kill second. I believe it's eight or Aiden second, Tyler second. Yep, all so. three co-round doubling. So yeah. they've got the team race they're leading right now. Uh, after this, if everything goes to plan, that lead will expand. You've also got a couple of Lebanon guys up there who could work together, Code Brown that could work together, so that's yep. always interesting to see if that if that comes into play. I feel like Aiden is just going to do Aiden things and kind of take that first pack out, but I know Lebanon from, uh, or not Lebanon, uh, Rahanu, he's still a good runner. I haven't seen much from him uh, this year, but I think... Uh, just as well as anyone, he could definitely pull something and run a really good Looks time. Looks like he's going right with Aiden, which is, uh, if Aiden's going to go for the record, the meet record, then that's a somewhat bold move. But That's a very bold move. Um, if anybody could do it in the field, it would be him. So, so yeah. I mean, he's seated at 928, which is means he ran 928. I don't know which meet that was at. But I think he's just going for a fast time. That's his goal. I think yeah. he did, and if he wants to get a fast time following Aiden, it's probably one of the best th moves you can make. I so, would agree. Let's see. It looks so. like they're taking that first lap out in 60... 67 high. 68. And then we got Kazik leading the chase pack. At about just... With, I believe, Owen Stein in second. Yeah, was that like about 69 for the chase pack? 68.07 for Cox. That's good. And 68.35 for Harriman, so right on his back. And then 71 for Kazik, Stein, and the Chase Pack. That's, that's like a 920, 920-ish pace, right? About 71s, 70s? Uh, 72 would be 9 flat 3K pace, which is... Uh, I think so. 70s is 920. Yeah, 70s is 920. So, so 71 is a bit back. Yeah, so That's a better way to think about it. Like... 28, something like that, but which is not a slow time at all. Looks like they've made a big, big move. It looks like there's about 35 meters in that going into the second lap. Another thing with the, the second lap. another thing with the times today is that they don't really matter. As long as you get the points that you're looking for, that's Absolutely. what matters. Absolutely. Now, Harriman is just going right with him. Cox right with looks him. like he throws in a surge right there, and Harriman is. Hanging tough. He knows Aiden's got a race under his belt. So does Harriman. Same races, actually. So yeah. we'll see who can come back stronger. Uh, obviously, Aiden's the favorite, but yes. we'll see what like happens. That was Daniel Sixon of Milford uh, now in front in that in that chase pack. So. so that was a 67 for that front pack. 67 flat, basically. That's Looks like Tyler Kazik has relinquished the lead, letting somebody else do the work here. Which could be the move. He, uh, get, he has amount, enough time to make it up anyway. So oh, for sure. Yeah. So that le looks like Daniel Sixon of Milford yeah. taking, the, taking the chase back here. It looks like I would they're say that's expanding a, that lead, too. It looks like they have almost about 100 meters worth of lead right now. That is crazy. Harriman's got about a three or four meter gap in between them now. Yeah, he's right. He's right on that, but he's still right on his shoulder. I think he's. I think he went out a little too hard. He might feel it a little later, but he's doing good. Oh Aiden sure, but he, he looks pretty good. He's smooth. He's yeah. got that forward lean. Aiden takes a peek back. Takes a peek back. Sees. So that was a 68 again. They're right on that 68. And that it looks like Harriman just kind of dropped off right then and there. Oh, he's feeling it. Oh wow. Yep. He made a move. Still got a big pack here for second. Yep. So uh, I mean third, I guess. Race for third. We got Tyler, uh, Nikhil right there. So Will that, Parker yeah. of Hanover leading that. We've had we've seen a couple of different leaders in that. Okay, they're in all that sharing the load. But that's how, that's what you want to see. If if they want to catch Harriman, who very well could come back to them. But you know, it's been it's been and fun to see in all of the boys' distance races. We've had some incredibly tight tight groups that 1600. Uh, I think 10th place was a 4.34. So to see that many runners in the 4.30s something that close see. together, that's you don't see that. You don't and see that very often. And at the end of the day, even though they're competitors, they're all, they all want to run fast times. Yeah. And having that people to kind of drag you out brings out the best in all of us and 
brings a really good meet. So I think it's really important that people, obviously you want to win, but use the people around you. Take leads, and that's how you run the fastest race of your life. I mean, some of the fastest races I've ever raced, I've shared the lead or worked right off someone, so. Some of those corners, I just noticed that some of those corners look pretty dark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have the lights over here and the yep. lights over in that corner, but this stretch over I mean, there is a little dark. Not that it matters for this race, but if you're out and, you know, they've, they've coned them off, but if you're in five, six, seven, or eight, you're, you're running almost in the dark. So an update on the leaders. So that was a 66 from Cox, which is Ooh. the fastest lap of the race. Harriman at a 72, which is still faster than the chase back. So he's not really, he's still hanging tough in there. He's, 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 he's still running a pretty good race. Yeah, he's falling off a little bit, but he's still definitely putting up a time. So 430 through the mile for Cox, putting him on track for a 9 minute 3200, which he has done before. Uh, many times, actually, I believe. A, so that would be a good day. 412 in the mile and then a 9 flat uh, 32. Yeah, it would be, be quite crazy. the double getting his 20 points. <laughs> Get his 20 points. Um, yeah, I mean, Harriman still looks pretty good. Yeah, he still looks pretty good. He took those first couple laps uh, hard, but he hasn't, like... He is the defending champ. But, yeah, so. and he hasn't, like, lost that much, like, ground in terms of, like, laps. He's still staying in that 68, 72 range. Aiden just decided to make a move. Yeah, so that one was another 72. He has got a massive lead on the third place chase back, so... Oh, looks like uh, third place is uh, starting to change. Looks like Nikhil's trying to take it out. Nikhil's trying to go into Thomas fast Thomas Wolf, Nick Kilchavda, Tyler Kazik, all right there. Um, but that's still a big pack for um, the 3200. Normally you see a little bit more separation because of ability, but no, they're all right there. They all want those points. Yep, Henry Hagen, Will Parker, uh, they're all in this, so. Oh, wow. Ooh. Huge move from Kazik. Yeah, Kazik just He just went. took off. Oh, my goodness. I'm sure he's been... He's been waiting to do he's that. He's been waiting for that one. Um, I'm sure he's definitely the, the pick for uh, uh, seed-wise to yeah. win. Uh, well, oh. Thomas Wolf could... Yeah, he's Thomas definitely up there as well. Third, but, yeah. So... I know he's Kazik's only around 938, but uh, in my... Uh, unprofessional opinion uh he's good for a bit faster than that so we'll yeah. see if that can we'll see come he's, through today he looks smooth right now he doesn't look like he's he's in that like death like state so he looks like he's smooth and the kill's looking looking like a little little sore but he's he's definitely looks like he can uh go a little bit longer uh let's see 71 from kazik that's good 71 that's following good. up from a 76 so they were really they were jogging out there. <laughs> and Aiden's coming back down on that straightaway. So, I think well, now that chase pack is broken up as we are more accustomed to seeing in the 32. Yeah. Yep. I'm sure this Kasich next lap will, move will be even faster have. than a 71 because yep. they didn't make right. that move. Bell so lap, lap, Aiden. Bell lap, 7.55 about, right? Uh, and he's got people to, people he's got to, pick people off. to shoot for now. Let's see. I'm curious to see how fast he takes this because we could see a sub nine, which would be crazy. And then there's Brahanu uh, just getting on that final 8 lap at 813. He can close well. So. He can close. He's not catching Aiden, but he's definitely going to have a very good race. There's William Simard. Then third place, Tyler. He's making his way on the straightaway. This is a good race. We had a a tight pack at the beginning, and then we saw some separation towards the end. Tyler Kazik made that move right when he should have. Ooh, but look at this. Uh, Hold on. Where, where is William Simard in this race? I lost track of him. Well, is that Aiden coming down? It's like uh, it was Chavda and Hagen. Aiden's like. at 851, 852. He's going for it. Will he oh. get it? Huh. Nice job, Aiden. 857.62. Light little like negative split there. 427 second New mile. New division record by a good good size margin. Yep. Oh my goodness. Unofficially 857.63. That 427 oh, second and mile. Here comes Rahanu. Rahanu's going. Mile, He's so. going. He's going to smash the time he won with last year. Yeah. That's oh yeah. Wait for it. Boom. He won with a 936 last year, and he's maybe 920. 920. 921. 
920-01. Man, Dang. just just missed just, up just shy. So he he had that first uh, couple laps fast, but he didn't really lose much ground when for what he oh was boy. going for. Oh boy, Kazik's got Kasich's a bit of a going. race behind him. Oh my him. gosh, right behind him, Nikhil and uh, too much too much space. Too much Can't space. make it up. Cool. Second in the mile, third in the 32. That's a good day right Nikhil there. Nikhil got Stein in fourth. Perfect. Uh, Nikhil fifth, and then that would be. Uh, Harriman's teammate Thomas Wolf in sixth. And was that what uh, Nikhil was seated for, fifth? I uh, think he was seated lower than that. Lower than that? Uh, no, he was fifth. Yeah. Fifth, so Co Brown getting their points. Yeah. Tyler, er, Tyler, I think he was seated. Uh, actually? Uh, he was seated fourth, so Co Brown actually uh, outperforming slightly as far as the, the projected total versus their actual total. Yeah. Which good on them. So 945 for Kazik. Bit of a tactical race, obviously. A 76 is in the middle. I mean, hard to run a fast time with that, but. Oh, wow. But for Aiden Cox, 412, right? 412 and then an 856, 857. That's a good day. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I. It's basically uh, mimicking his uh, performance in indoor. Nothing wrong with that. So, Cole Brown getting the points they wanted and a little bit more. I think they got two extra points, right? Yep. Two extra points. Uh, looks like an athlete took their shirt off at the line. Uh, could be disqualification, although um, no scoring there anyways. So it looks like we're getting up for the 4x4. Four four. Now this, one of my favorite races, 4x4. Four four, Absolutely. This is definitely how some uh, championships are decided. Yep. 4x4. Four it's, four, it's, it's the closer for a reason. I think... Uh, this is potentially the most exciting spectator race of the day. Closes at the meet. I mean, what better way to go? Everyone's dog tired. They, most of the people in this race are not fully fresh. They're just trying to get in that last little put bit of points that they can to score. But I doubt anybody is fresh. I mean, there's a chance. But there's a chance, but it's very, unlikely. very rarely. Yep. Uh, there'll be a few. These are some pretty, pretty deep heats with 16 or. Uh, the fields have 16 teams, so two heats. So you imagine that some yeah, of those. Yeah, I guess you're right. But it's a lot of runners. You ma got to imagine some of them at this point. At this point, it's whoever wants it more. And another thing is that uh, relays. So none of these teams really knew before this meet who's in the relay. So it's a bit of a guesswork game. Yeah. You want to put in the best lineup, but you want to you don't want to sacrifice other events for it either. So. I would, I would imagine at this point there might be some teams that are, you know, digging <laughs> deeper into their bench, as it were, depending on you know, f levels of fatigue, yep. maybe, you know, injuries, some maybe yeah. even injuries. <laughs> there have been a couple hate today. To see it, but yeah. I remember a, a high school meet where I was maybe like the seventh guy down <laughs> down the line and ended up getting used just because that's so it happens in a big meet like this where you've got a lot of. A lot of athletes working hard and yep. a lot at stake. Everyone's giving it their all. Yeah, Work. and this is, I mean, Meet of Champions is next week, which is obviously super important, but this is, technically speaking, this is the state title for these guys, so, sorry. <laughs> it's um, state meets, sometimes you have, like, the faster time, or not necessarily the faster time, but it's there's more strategy in the state meet versus the MOCs. Oh, yeah, because, well, it's not a, especially uh, with well, the, uh, the team race, there's no team scoring at MOCs, so. It's all individuals. Yep. Here we go. Cole Brown handing it off in second. Quickly overtaken, though. Yes. Uh, by. Ooh. What is that? John Stark at the front? Oh, not anymore. Not anymore, yeah. Oh, my gosh. They're moving. They put about a 15 meter gap on the person who was originally in first. So we've got Lebanon, Co Brown, Plymouth, John Stark, Milford, Sauhegan, and maybe Conval. And nope, maybe Conval did not did not start. It looks like there was some confusion about Who's lining what people teach? up. There's there's two teams not on the track. Yeah, Bowen Con for this one. They might have mixed up the heat uh, heats, which at the end of the day it sucks, but they unfortunately cannot make that up. Yeah, you've, yeah. That or they maybe they had too many injured people, but yeah, that's, they, that's a little unlikely. 
Ooh, this is going to be close for uh, that. You got Merrimack. Well, Plymouth had that good 4 by 8 earlier there. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Sorry. They're leading. Ooh. That could have been ugly. Looks similar to the old Merrimack. Jersey. All those backpack were about to hand off at the same time. So Plymouth, Coe Brown. John Stark. Stark, Lebanon. And Milford. So, uh, nope. No? Jump the gun. Plymouth, oh, Coe yeah, Brown, yeah. John Stark, Sauhegan, Milford, and Lebanon, your top six in that order. Anchor leg coming up here. Uh, arguably the most the important, most important, important one. All the other lanes, they just need to get you in position. It's, yeah. I feel first, like first leg is first pretty important. important. Fourth leg is the most important. Most important. Middle yeah. legs. Middle legs. Maintain. Maintain, exactly. And that third leg passing that fourth leg, that's very important because you want to be in a position to where you can win because if they have too much of a gap, it's a lot harder to make it up in a 4x4 four four than, say, a Say at 800, a lot less of ground. Looks like Cole Brown is going to, oh. It's Cole, tight. Tight, so Cole Brown and. Uh, Cole Brown handed off in the lead, but looks like uh, Plymouth had a better handoff there. Yes. So this should be interesting. Backpack trying to make some moves, but Cole Brown and uh, Plymouth, they're, they're going at it. Looks like Plymouth is starting to make more of a move than Cole Brown, though. But it's not over yet. I I think if they get past them before that 200, before that curve, it could be a very close game. Looks like Cole Brown right on that shoulder. It's going to be a lot more effort on that to pass on that straightaway, but or not that straightaway, that curve, but if they want to win. Hold on. Ooh, it's close. Can't really see. Oh, it looks like Cole Brown's slightly. Looks like Cole Brown's making a move on him. Pretty much shoulder to shoulder there for a moment, but for a moment. Cole Brown's kicking harder. Looks like Cole Brown is is going to get it, and we have Cole Brown in first with a 43 or, or 434, 434, 42. 42. Uh, Plymouth, Milford, 434, Lebanon. 40, or 39 actually. Yeah, looks like on there. Switched over. Switched over. So, looks like uh, next wave of girls is about to begin. See, most of these uh, athletes have lots of layers on before the line. It is a bit chilly. A bit chilly. I know I'm a little cold, so uh, make sure those muscles stay warm, especially in the 400 short short sprint. Uh, keeping the muscles warm is especially if they're that last leg. That last leg, they better keep warm because that size points. Yeah, I, I even see that the fourth legs and maybe even the thirds, they got jackets on and pants over there, so hopefully they can take that off quickly. Can't say uh, I blame them for that. I'm, no. I'm bouncing around. Under bouncing the around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I got shorts and We're a giving a little bit of a shudder. It's a little chilly, but which is a little bit harder for the 4x4 four four because typically in like sprinting events, you want to be a little bit warmer, but even in the cold, I still think the stakes of the state meet are going to make some fast times. About to begin. Boom, so Merrimack off. Valley, Hanover, Hollis Brookline, Kingswood, Oyster River, Kennett, Pembroke, and Goffstown. The eight teams on the track for this one. Oyster River, Kennett, Pembroke, all in the top five of the team race right now. So could have an impact on the scoring. some of the positions in the standings, although at this point, Co Brown is a lead that can't be made up in this event, but Oyster River, though, with the top seed in this. Uh, a good result here from Oyster River could definitely keep it close. We still have some field events. The field events are going to be a big factor in this. It depends on yep. who had the better field events. Uh, looks like the close, close handoff, but it looks like it's like Kennett. Kennett handed off first, and then Oyster River. I believe that's Ada Wheat, double champion today. So handing it off into the lead, maybe a triple champion. So we'll see. It looks like there's a lot more separation um, 
in this race than the last race. There was a little bit of like a pack going on with that second uh, lap. One of the things I love about the 4x4 is you have athletes from the 100 meters all the way to the 3200 that are competing in this. So Exactly, because the I have noticed somebody that was in the 2-mile in this, and I have also noticed somebody in the 100. So It is fun to see how teams cobble cobbled together their 4x4s, especially on a day like today where a lot's already happened. Yeah, because 400 is a great event. If you're a sprinter, it's a little bit towards the end of your uh, what you're used to, but... 3200, you don't have that speed, so it's very interesting to see at the end of the race who has the more endurance to kind of take it. Ooh, this is gonna be close for the oh, handoff. Oh wow! Wow! Oh, the four teams the right teams. there. Looks Kenneth like Oyster River, Oyster River slightly River. in front. Killer leg a... from Mackenzie Cook there. Yeah, 3200 Oyster... champion. See, and then uh, Kenneth is actually gonna take the the front there. It's a good job by the girls who finished to get the handoff stun and get off the track cleanly that, that could have been that dangerous. could have been could have been very messy and that was quite smooth given how many teams are right there I always so find good on them for so being impressive aware. the people who do the relays who like especially when you're that close how do you not like collide into one another it's well the jackets are off jackets they are, are off. geared They're up ready. for this last leg this is important. Whoever hands it off in first has a big lead on the other people. So it looks like Kennett in first, followed closely behind by Oyster River. Looks like they're making a little bit more of a gap, though. Still pretty tight, though. That You've backpack got five is teams yeah, right that, there. Right there. This still is anyone's anyone's course, but oh, Kennett coming through. Oyster Look River and Milford in a dead heat. Wow. That was a fast start. Second place is undecided yet. So they went first, but it looks like they're doing a little bit of separation between the five of them. I'm curious who's going to win. Looks like the girl from Oyster River is picking up a little bit. I think that's the 300 hurdles champion. So. Oh, did she just pass her? I can't see because there's it is, so many people. There's a lot of people in the infield. Let's see. See, Oyster River is in the lead. Oyster River, yeah, she pa followed passed. Followed by it. Kingswood, I think. Dang, that was a fast. This is my favorite part of oh. me. Everyone comes to crowd the. They're all way oh, Wow, this is close. This is a close race. This is close. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Wow. Come oh, on. Boy. Shoulder to oh shoulder. Oh my gosh. Here shoulder, it goes. Shoulder. They're 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 leading. They're leading. It's at the oh. wall. Oh. Oh wow. Ooh. Oyster River, I would say, Ooh. just out leans Kingswood. She fell. That it was close. I think four eleven twenty five. Yep. Four eleven twenty seven. Yep. Oyster oh River is going to take goodness. it. That is. I believe a that was Aaron Cardi. Tight race. Aaron Cardi of Oyster two, River. Point zero two. So, oh my gosh, that was ridiculous. Wow. Close. So both of those athletes ran a sub sixty right there. That's impressive. That is very impressive. Very impressive. They were neck and neck for that entire time. Looks like we got the first heap of boys 4x4 four four going up now. Which a lot of them don't seem to have too many layers. I think they're starting to feel the heat from that last one. They were all huddling around over there, so they're a little bit warmer, I would imagine. I see one athlete with a jacket. One athlete. Which is significantly less than the maybe six or seven that I saw with jackets last week. Let's see if all that right, impacts any. All right, in this so this in this first heat, we have Conval, Kennett, Lebanon, Southeegan, St. Thomas, Bow, Plymouth. West did not start, and they're off. Looks like they're gonna hit that 100 about 12 and 13 seconds. Not bad. This should be interesting. I'm curious to see how fast these guys go, especially with it being so cold right now. We were talking about this earlier in the in the broadcast, but you know, how often do you have ath you know track athletes in a situation where you're you know, competing? In a venue like this, under the lights, you know, typically not something you see a lot for track and field. 
that. Especially not New Hampshire. Not New Hampshire. So I know in California, which well, is, that? is that not Hanover? in New Hampshire. That's Lebanon, Lebanon. Saint Thomas. Saint Thomas. Uh, mm. Athletes cheering Saint on their next leg as they Saint finish. Saint Thomas might have been out of the zone. They were pretty far up. Yeah, that's. They were pretty far up. It was hard to see what it's else hard was. To see. The, that we'll, could be a we'll GQ. We'll see what the uh, officials is. rule later. Rule. So it was a little rough. I they might still be in the line, but that could be some serious points depending on how well they do. Fifty-five for that opening leg. That's that's not blazing fast, but that's still pretty good. Uh, especially that they're all tired. Fifty-five, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing bad though. Ooh, it looks like uh, there was a switch of the leads between Lebanon and. Uh, was Saint Thomas going through? Uh, I know Sauhegan, Sauhegan in Lebanon. St. Oh. Thomas, your top three. They're all right there. Sauhegan looks like they're taking it. Oh. Lebanon athlete was in the eight and the four by eight, and now the four by four, so. Alden Betterly of Bow ripping it in the back. He, uh, this is his third event. He already did the 800 and the 16. Very competitive fields. Yeah. Ooh, looks like he, we have some ch a chase going on. Will he get them, though? So the most amount of events you're allowed to compete in at the state meet is four, four. and I am sure that there is a few athletes in here that have done all four. Which is <laughs> very impressive. Especially if you do some of those mid-distance events. Yep. It's a lot of work. Oh, yes. Sauhegan opening South up a little bit of a lead. This is definitely, this definitely can lead for... Ooh. Lebanon and St. Oh. Thomas right oh, there. He's down. Ooh, yeah, it's what you like to see, leaving it all on the, the leaving track. It all on the track. That's what you like to see. That's track and field, baby. I know Ooh, this is looks track, like uh, Lebanon's trying to catch up to South Egan. Oh, he's getting him. It's a little hard to see, but I think I Lebanon. I think that's Owen Stein from South Egan. Uh, yep. Lebanon just camera. passed him. But he has been passed. He's been passed. South Egan is now in second. Oh, he's ripping it. But can he hold on? He needs to just hold on for that last straightaway. It looks like South Eakins making a little bit more of a push back onto him. Oh, this is going to be close. Oh, from behind. Let's see. Can third place now have second? Oh, Ooh, it's getting close. It's getting close. Come on. STA for third. Look at that. Boom. So Lebanon, St. Thomas, South Eakin, Bo. Conval, Kennett, and Plymouth rounding it out. Boy, Plymouth had a pretty big offset uh, setback, I should yeah. say, going into that last leg. Everyone caught up, but didn't four. get it. Everyone sub four, three one, uh, 41.92, I believe, for the winner. Final race of the day here. The second section of the boys four by a couple four. More, a couple more people in jackets for this one. So. Yep. Smart move, so. It's getting colder and colder. Yeah. And Oyster River has a great track. I've ran here a couple times, so I'm excited to see the fast times they're doing right now. This is a very nice facility. They did a great job getting it ready, getting everything set up. So big shout out to Oyster River uh, for hosting. Curious to see the winning time for this. Any guesses? Oof. Everyone's tired. I don't let's know. See what we've. Let's see what the. Let's see what the seeds. Ah, uh, not the right. Not the right view. Where's the? Well, I will say I don't. I don't see anyone going sub. 330 at this point. I think we'll be close. I don't think we'll see anyone go below. I'm gonna say sub. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say 335, 335. I think that's a fair assumption. Everyone's a little bit tired. It's a little bit cold. We could be shocked. There, there's always the edge of the state meet, but and this is definitely gonna be the most electric event. So, so we've got yeah. John Stark, yeah, everyone Merrimack on the Valley, line. Hanover, Co Brown, Oyster River, House, Brookline, 
Milford and Kingswood. Final race on the track of the meet. Two athletes not using blocks, so I'm gonna make the assumption that they are distance athletes. Distance or they, they're new to the sport. Could be either or. And they're off. I'm curious to see what they take this first leg out, out at. Looks like everyone's cheering on the back stretch. Hard to determine an early leader here. Can't really tell. Especially since with the stagger. Yeah. But. Uh, looks like Goffstown, maybe. Goffstown. Uh, I think that might be Hanover. Hanover in the maroon. Although it is pretty dark out uh, now. It's, it's hard to, it's it's hard hard to, to see, see in some of those back corners. Let's see who's going to hand it off. Hear a big crowd cheering, so it must be close. Oh, uh, yep, that's Hanover right there. Ooh. Oyster River. Oyster River hands it off first. Oh, that was close. Ooh. Almost missed the zone there, it looked like. That, yeah, that was, that was close. Let's see, it looks like Oyster River is out in front, followed by is Hanover. That Hanover. And then Co Brown just made a move to third, but third. he is. He's moving. moving, oh my goodness. Oyster yep. River and Hanover both taking it out in the 52s. That would be... Hollis, uh, Brookline, and Cole Brown coming through in the 53s. Looks like Cole Brown, yep, Cole Brown out in first. Made made all the way up to first. I believe that's Matthew Corvo. Corvo. Runner up of the 200. So, definitely got but some they're, wheels they're there. They're right behind him though. This is definitely not an easy choice. Co Brown, Boom. Oyster River, Hanover, all right there. Oh, Ooh. there was a little bit of shoving. Yeah, it's definitely. Oh. oh, that's another shove. It's definitely interesting to see what Hanover. Holy cow, they they making a big move. Big move. Co Brown oh, wow. is yeah. Co Brown is holding off. Barely a little bit. holding off. Oh, Hanover. there you go. You got to make it to the corner. You have gotta to make, make it, it to, to that corner. corner. That corner is the most important part of this 400 arguably other than the straightaway it's, for finishing. Yeah. I if would say that corner is very important. Uh, a good reference would be the, what, 2021 uh, 1600? 1600. Uh, state meet D2. Perfect example of how important that corner is. I think you're meaning about the 3200. No, I think the 1600. 1600? Yeah. Code Brown, Hanover, Merrimack Valley. It looks oh, like almost top a, three. Almost a really bad the handoff there. From Code uh, Brown. It looks like it's that Gavin Demas. Gavin Demas, 800 champion. He won with style. Ran right off the track. Not sure what that was about, but hey, you can do that, I guess, if you win. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, but here we go. Cole Brown and uh, Hanover. They're close. Gavin's definitely tired from those two events, so I'm curious to see uh, how he it's finishes. Like Merrimack Valley in third, and whoever's in fourth making a, making a big move. Oh, it's final leg. Oh, they're they're moving though. Gavin oh. used to be a 400 meter runner. Gavin's moving. Transition, so it's not no surprise here. Holy cow! Holy crap! He might oh, get some. Yeah, he might get, get, that get that some. Sub. Will he get some third? There oh. we go. 328. 327. Or 327. Wow. Yeah. How Dang. about that? Let's see what that final Let's split was. If it'll load up. Um. 327.89. Co Brown. Dang. We were totally off. They Merrimack Valley 33007, Hanover 33033, Holy. Hulse Brookline 33037. So, so we said like 334. They said no. We're dropping yeah, it. They're... They dropped that hammer. And you know, and for the last race of a championship meet, that's what that's what we want. But you see, that's what the states do. States yep. elevates competition. They proved us wrong. They. Had one heck of a run. It's 327, especially if most of the guys were doubling, tripling. Crazy race. So I'll let you guys know right now that's a school record for them. Ooh, school wow. record by Cole Brown. Know how I know that? Was that yours? Oh, yeah. we got. So that's an older one. An older record. Wow. So well done to Cole Brown. Congratulations on Amazing. your title. Uh, still unofficial, but I, I've got to imagine that Cole Brown's going to be sweeping. For the, the men's and women sweeping D2 for the second year in a row. Guys and girls both winning. 
they won, wait, they won, did they win guys and girls last year? Yes. So they won three years in a row, guys and girls. Oh, wow. 2021, yep. 2022, 2023. Yep. This this year, I think it's a little bit more clear that they won. I wasn't sure about last year. How was it? Um, if my memory serves me correctly, the boys was not, mm, you know, one was close and one less so. Yeah, but I that, do not remember which one was which. But that 2021 meet, that was very close between Wyndham and Coe Brown. There was a point in the race where Wyndham have, had us beat by like 19 right. points. So, All right. But well, this has been a pleasure. Jim Davio, any final thoughts? Coe Brown, Co Brown sweep. sweep, good for them. Yeah, I think that's definitely what we're, what we're looking at. Nothing wrong with that. Certainly not if you're Coe Brown. I'd be pretty, be pretty pleased. <laughs> huh? He lost something. Yeah, I did. I, I already told him, man. School record. Yeah. Exactly. Like yeah. But like we say, records are meant to be broken. They still had the record at one point, but not anymore. Well, it looks like uh, pole vault just wrapped up, actually. So with that, uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and uh, be done for the night and uh, done for divisions this year. So um, a few closing things before we do leave you. Uh, Hanging out for those team scores. Obviously, we're leaning towards Co Brown on both sides of it right now. But just a couple more messages from the NHIAA. From Sports Banquets to Senior Nights, yard greetings make any occasion even more memorable. Let New England Yard Greetings spell out your personalized message. Learn more at NewEnglandYardGreetings.com. Service Credit Union is proud to offer school spirit debit cards for NHIAA schools. Visit NHIAA.org to learn how to sign up your school, earn cash bonuses for your programs, and spread your school spirit. Special Olympics New Hampshire and the NHIAA believe that unified sports help young people become agents of change in the schools and communities. The NHIAA currently offers unified programs in soccer, basketball, outdoor track, and volleyball. For more information on Unified Sports, please visit NHIAA.org. New high school sports officials have an opportunity to make a difference in their communities right away. To learn more about becoming a high school sports official, please visit www.NHIAA.org. And lastly, get full coverage of today's events thanks to our partners at Runners Alley and New Hampshire Track and Field .com. That is us, and that is what we have for you tonight. Thank you for to uh, tuning in. Once again, this is New Hampshire Track and Field .com, powered by Runners Alley Meat Hub, brought to you by Tim's Truck Capital. Season sponsor of Hoka, of course. Huge shout out and thank you to them. Thank you for everyone tuning in. And with that, have a good night. We will catch you next week for Meet of Champions. We all need medical care. Experts.